This uh, January 21st, 2020 meeting of the Sweetwater County Board of County Commissioners. Um, we let the record show that the quorum is present. And if everyone would please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. With that, I... First order of business is approval of the agenda. Uh, with the uh, consensus of our commissioners, I'd like to, under other, put the uh, workman's comp uh, joining with the WCCA back on. Just reminding that uh, back in December 3rd, we did look at it. And there wasn't a motion, but uh, there doesn't have to be a motion for something to not move forward. But we did, as a consensus, um, talk about it and felt at that time it wasn't necessary, so I'd like to put it back on. Um, Gary will come up, um, McLean, at that time during other to uh, give us some additional information that's been presented. Also, under executive session, we'll have real estate as well as personnel. Um, is there any other changes to the agenda? Commissioners? If there are no other changes at this time, I would... Uh, Entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So sure. yes, we got, so we got a motion by Commissioner Shane Field. That'd be a second, Mr. Second. Commissioner Lloyd. We got a second by Commissioner Lloyd. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries. Uh, next on our agenda is approval of the minutes, January 7th, uh, 2020. Uh, commissioners, what's your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, we move that we. Approve the minutes of January 7th, 2020, as presented. Do we have a motion by Commissioner Smith? Is there a second? Second. second. We have a second to by Commissioner Johnson to approve the minutes. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next under tab B is acceptance of the bills, uh, which is the EALs, the monthly report, the bonds, the uh, abates, rebates, as well as the hospital maintenance expenditures. Commissioners, what's your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the uh, county vouchers and warrants, the EAL, the monthly reports, the bonds, the abates, rebates, and the hospital maintenance expenditures as presented. Thank you. Commissioner Smith, we do have a, a uh, motion to approve the bills as presented. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Shanefield. Discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. First order of business is a budget amendment by Rock Springs Sweetwater County Airport. Ms. Barry, you're here today. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning, Donnie. Thank you for being here, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Have the airport manager. Okay. Would you please come up to Mr. Chairman? And, uh, and please tell us who we are. I am Bonnie Berry, the County Manager for Sweetwater County. Devin Rubeck, the Airport Director, Southwest Wyoming Regional Airport. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, Ms. Berry. This morning we have Resolution 20-01-CL-01. It is a budget amendment for Sweetwater County. It increases the expenditures in the general fund by $62,977.83 going to the Rock Springs Sweetwater County Airport account. It decreases the general county reserves by the same amount, $62,977.83, coming out of the cash carryover. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Berry. Do we have any questions for Ms. Berry? Yeah. Go ahead, Commissioner Johnson. It's not for Ms. Berry. I'd, I'd like to, why, why are we doing this? Why do you need this money? What's, what's, your, what's your issue with this adjustment? Mr. Chairman, Commissioner, uh, this adjustment is uh, just to correct uh, an issue that occurred at the end of the fiscal year, fiscal year 19. Uh, if you guys remember back to early 2019, this commission approved uh, funding for our terminal uh, design, uh, $133,333, and we did not draw all of that money down from the commission before June 30th. Um, so on, I guess, through the county's end-of-year process, that money was rolled over to carryover. 
Um, and so this is just pulling it back from carrying over back to our line item for us to finish out that project. Um, but that's, that's, that's all it is. So the total amount did not change? It did not change, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair. So I. All right. Uh, any other questions? No, that was all. Right. Okay. If there's no other questions, I believe at this point. Did you have one? No. Okay. Uh, if there's no other questions at this time, we'll open this up for a public hearing. So, uh, anybody who wish to comment on this issue from the public, please feel free to at this time. Yes, please. I'm glad to hear that it was just a roll Would you please, excuse me, oh. would you please stand and introduce yourself? My name is Kate Neal. Um, I work for High Country Realty, and I'm glad to hear that it was an additional money added into what should have been budgeted and that it's just a roll over. Thank you. We all are. <laughs> no, <we all> <laughs> uh, any other public comment? Any other public comment? We'll close this here. At this point in time, commissioners, I would entertain a motion to approve resolution 20-01-CL-01, which is a budget amendment for the Rock Springs Sweetwater County Airport in the amount of $62,900. Seventy-seven dollars and eighty-three cents. So moved. I have a motion by Commissioner Smith. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Lloyd. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks for being here, Devin. Okay. Next item on the list is tab D, which is a. Uh, county retail liquor license for Buckboard Marina and <coughs> is our county clerk, Ms. Cindy Lane. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, today, notice is hereby given that an applicant whose name is set forth below, which is Buckboard Marina at Flaming Gorge LLC, um, is uh, has an application for a county retail liquor license for the period of January. 21st, 2020 through April 9th, 2020 um, is brought forward by Tony and Jennifer Valdez. I believe they brought in Ms. Linda. They purchased the um, Buckboard Marina and it's the length of the liquor license. So that's until, the new, until the new term um, shows up. But they have to um, get their own. Okay. They can't just hold it over in, in the other name. Thank you. Questions? Go ahead, Commissioner Johnson. So this is, in essence, a, a renewal of existing at some point in time, and the only problem with it is because of the new owners. New owners. Mm -hmm. So it's not an additional liquor it's, license. Right. It's not an additional, but to them it's a new. And it, and a it new is a liquor license. It's not a multiple. Right. It is an actual um, contract retail liquor license. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Very good. Any other questions, Commissioners? At this time, we will open up uh, the for public hearing regarding the uh, new county retail liquor license for Buckboard Marina at Flaming Gorge Way doing business as Buckboard Marina. Public comment. Public comment. Close for public comment. Uh, commissioners, your pleasure. John? Yes. I will make a motion to approve the um, application by Buckboard Marina um, at Blooming Gorge LLC doing business with Buckboard Marina for the liquor license as presented. Okay, we have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Got a second from Commissioner Smith. Any more discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, at this point in time, uh, we'll move forward with uh, Commissioner comments, and I guess I'm up first. So, so I don't know if I need to apologize for the things I'm going to bring up or not, just because there's a number of them. <laughs> but, I know, the, and they're just information basis, Mr. So, first of all, um, scholarship. I didn't hear from any of you on the scholarship draft form, so I just want to make sure that... Uh, if there's any questions on revision, if there's not, I will <coughs> move forward and... Was my revision oh, in there after the last meeting? Oh, sorry. And that was... Yes. In fact, here's where it was, it was added. 
on the information page of list other awards and scholarships. That's specifically what you asked. So it's there. Um, there's a copy, and I will take them forward to the schools unless I hear otherwise and notify them. Also, uh, I'll hand out liaisons. I did uh, really. I did add two lay uh, two two extra sheets in it, or not sheets, but two extra lines, and one is SEDC, where it's uh, Ms. Uh, Commissioner Shanefield is listed as a board member, and then myself as the liaison, and that, uh, so there, otherwise not anything, one of the uh, liaisons have changed, front and back, there's some on the back too, please, and so with that, uh, um, there they are, and we'll just leave them and keep, continue to move forward. And I think at if, if any point in time that uh, somebody feels there's a conflict with s scheduling or what they're doing and they need to um, do some shuffling, just visit with me and we'll get together and see how we can help each other out and go from there. Okay? But they will remain that way for the rest of this year. So that one's pretty well taken care of there. Then also... Uh, uh, we got a letter from the uh, Department of Revenue, and uh, I'd like to uh, just mention that uh, property tax appraisal certificates for Sweetwater County in uh, Mr. Davis's department. I'd like to congratulate you that uh, his staff is either one, two, let's see, Dave, um, Dave Patsy, Joe, Marianne, and Lorraine are permanent certi permanently certified, and under temporary certification is Heather, Jessica, and Casey. And, just a, that's a great thing for the county, Dave, and, and please let your people know that very pleased with what they're doing and making sure they stay certified. Great. We Thank appreciate you. it. Um, also, uh, just to share with you also direct distribution. I listened in on the revenue meeting and moving forward is going to be 105 million direct distribution to, that didn't change to all the cities and towns. The one thing that they're looking at a recommendation is the amendment to uh, for that, and uh, let me grab it so I don't say the wrong thing. What they're looking at there is uh, amending the bill, which would be uh, population towns would have populations over 35. They would raise their uh, minimum of ten thousand dollars. They'd raise it from ten to fifteen thousand, and for towns under 35,000 raising it from 20000 to 35000 immediately. Uh, it was amazing that uh, the number of uh, towns that uh, had uh, at the hearing that had indicated that anywhere from 17 to 24% of their town budgets depended on direct distribution dollars. In the long run, the bigger cities is where it will be impacted. That, but they felt it was important, and uh, because of that particular recommendation, uh, Senator Beep, or Representative or Senator Bebout had uh, strongly supported moving this bill forward as long as those small towns were taken care of. So the 105 at this point in time is in place, so we will hope that uh, that continues to move forward. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'd like to comment on that. Please. Again, I, I've been very vocal about this. It's not enough. Uh, uh, cities, towns, and counties should uh, receive a, a more significant direct, direct distribution from the state. Uh, we, re we represent all of the people in Sweetwater County as well as the other commissioners re represent everyone in the whole state of Wyoming, and yet we have to go shy and begging for money. It's not right. I don't agree with it, and I don't think we should agree with it. But uh, you are on the board of directors now, and... Uh, I would like you just uh, at, at the opportune times to bring those issues forward. And, and, I, and, I, and I will, and I'll continue to do so. The other aspect I think that continues to be, need to be brought up is the consensus money that was taken away years ago for uh, cities and towns. So that there's some great work to do there, but if we don't stay involved and stay connected, we can't be a part of it. You're not at the table, you're on the menu. Thank you. That's <laughs> where have we heard that before? <laughs> there we are. So thank you very much. Um, also, we all received a, a what was called a dissolution letter uh, regarding the 2013 
uh, special purpose tax uh, um, project or in that. And I turn that over to uh, Mr. De Leon, and he's looking into it to uh, find out what we need to do as far as uh, with that dissolution letter regarding that particular uh, um, uh, special purpose tax situation. When he completes it, he'll come forward and let us know what our actions are, and as well as what we need to do. So when we finish with this special purpose tax, uh, then you uh, will know how to not let that happen again. So we have time, and as soon as we know, we'll get there. Um, Commissioner Johnson for facilities. Um, has, do you recall if there's been any conversations regarding the signs on the front of the courthouse over here that are covered up with paper, the letters and that, when we moved the courts? What they did is covered the paper. <coughs> do you recall? Okay. Um, I think yeah, June, June could talk to uh, Chuck about it. If yeah, if there was a, well, you know, I think it's a matter, matter of getting them off or anything. I was just curious that it's all, you know, um, I'll follow through if it's all right with you. Absolutely. And then the other thing, too, is uh, it was brought to our attention that I know the uh, old library, Carnegie Library, is under study to see if anything can be done with it. But while we're waiting for that to happen, that uh, library continues to not get better, but slowly get worse. Um, one of our uh, judges has looked at the building and has, and has asked that uh, if it's all right with you to visit with our facilities people, there's a stained glass window that's irreplaceable in that building. And as that building settles, it's beginning to put pressure on that stained glass window. And they're asking if there's some way in how we can have our guys remove it, if it's safe to do so, and then cover the hole up and preserve that window for if the building moves forward for it being fixed up, or at least if nothing else, we'd have that window out of that building in case we don't do anything if that building is destroyed. Go ahead. Is it an external window or internal? I think it's external. You can see from the outside, I guess. Is all right. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we need to. As you as you know, the structural that's been structurally, we've had a structural inspection made of that building, and it's not. It's not safe. It's not safe. Yeah. So anyhow, you know, I'll visit with him if it's all right with you as commission. That type of thing. Um, I would like to take a minute and uh, do a special thanks. Um, I don't know. One of Commissioner Johnson's liaisons is um, Mark Cotton. He does a lot of work with public plans. And we all received a copy of a letter that came out regarding the migration routes, comments, and that type of thing. Uh, very well done, um, Commissioner Johnson, and I know you're part of that. And I'd like you to pass on to Mark, who, at least me, and if the other commissioners agree, thank you. Job well done. Absolutely. And continue working in that arena. Well, I appreciate that very much. I want to make some comments on that. I've had some thoughts about that migration corridor or any corridor, and I will, I'll cover that when I do my comments. Please do. Thank you. Um, just share with you on February 13th, when we're down for the WCCA um, legislative conference, that Thursday the 13th is not only the uh, <coughs> legislative dinner with the uh, legislators and joint with the other counties, but also we've been asked if we want to continue, or not continue because it's taken a break, but do we want to continue to, uh, or do we want to be a part of, of the reception that they'd like to host uh, at the uh, Little America that same evening, a little earlier, where the um, legislators can come and visit with cities, both cities and us. Um, and generally at that thing, Mr. Johnson, I think when you were the guy, they didn't do it last year, but when we were there in the past, they brought Kronsky's, they brought other things. And do you wish to have that um, legislative reception? Generally the cost of whatever it is, it's been a third between us and a third between each city. And the cost they're anticipating is running from 1500 to $2,000. Now, Rick Lee, with the chamber who's organizing this, will be here later on the agenda if we want to ask some questions then, you know, if we can't get them answered now. Go ahead. Any questions? Yeah, well, there's two issues. The dinner, you know, we share that with Subway, yep. Lincoln County and us. That, that's one issue that we do. And yep. I strongly recommend we continue that. Yep. And the, the 
reception, we've also done that with the chamber has taken care of that for yeah. us. Mm -hmm. So Rick, and he's saying it's, how much is our share of that? It's just, they think it's going to be between 1500 and 2000 so we get a third of it, so six to 700 I'd say. All right. You know, yes, we have. We, we've, we've done, done that. that. And I want to make sure with new commissioners, just so you know what's, what's we've going done on. It, that doesn't mean we have to do it. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. So, continue it. Comments? So, it would basically be like a, a co sponsor event between the uh, Rock Springs Green River and to educate local legislators or. We're going to talk with them about the legislative issues, and I've got those bills. I brought them with me this morning of what so far. And that would be in between our sessions <coughs> for the commission meetings and then our dinner with the okay. case. So the day would go Thursday, commissioner's conference. It would finish mm -hmm. Thursday, whatever time it is. Then shortly after that, the reception. Welcome. With, with the five elected officials will be invited as well as the legislators and the two towns with their ruling bodies as well as the county commissioners would go into this reception and visit with about the bills. You know, one of the topics, just like Commissioner Johnson shared, it's an opportunity to visit about, hey, you know, continue to support, make sure we get it, and that, or any of the bills that I'll pass out this morning, and that type of thing. And then, shortly after that, is the joint county dinner. So you have the choice of, you don't have to make a choice. You can eat Kronsky's all night and then go have your <laughs> dinner, or you can go to whatever. But they're both at that same evening and uh, that type of thing. So anything else, Commissioner Roy? No, I think that's it. Mr. Shane Ford. Um, in the past, some of the nonprofit organizations that are down there for legislative actions or you know, to testify, they have been invited as well. So I've, I've been involved a couple of times, and I think it's been, it's been positive. It's allowed for some good open conversations, and it, I, think, I think it would be a plus for us to, to move forward and continue to support yeah, that and be involved in it. It almost feels redundant to me because we're because we're we're going to be meeting with the same legislators afterwards. But maybe and you guys have been more involved, so that's go ahead. That's not true. Okay, you, you you'll get you'll get people like Bebout will be at this reception. Okay. The governor will, should be at this reception, and they're not invited to the other reception. So okay. I, I think you, there's a bigger uh, following that we get opportunities to see some people you wouldn't see. Uh, and this reception. Well, that makes sense then. Yeah, so thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Anything else? All right, so we'll go ahead and move forward and I'll tell them, yeah, we're, we're players and that type of thing. So thank you for that. No, so, Mr. Chairman, yes, somebody on this commission will have to help Rick with that. So we, will, we will require some some help from us. Yeah. I can, I can help with that. Yeah, we'll help, we'll help with this. Yeah. We'll make sure it gets done. I mean, it's just been a matter of at the last minute. Here's what we got to do. They do have some swag things that they do put out, and I think we still have some of the old koozies. If we don't, we should get some should more. Get some more. Those, those were well received. Yeah, they were very well. So, okay. And we'll talk more about that. Anything else? All right, very good. We're planning on being a part of that. Um, I also would like to, um, I'm sure Commissioner Johnson, because of and Commissioner Shanefield, but the uh, design group, Thomas P. Miller, were in town last week, and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I do know they visited the airport, they visited with uh, Raising Association, Simpla, um, also the um, Pacific Power, just to name a few, plus ACDC. So they were in town starting to do their work, and I, I've known who they've been visiting with, been catching a few of the people as I see them, and, People are pretty impressed that uh, they believe we hired a really good cons consulting group for, to help us with that Middle Baxter project. So that's moving forward. So I just wanted to share that. Uh, also, uh, as we get ready for budget preparation, um, what I'd like to do is for our next meeting bring in uh, Dave and uh, Rob, ask them to come in as agenda item and just give us a status quo of where we're at and where they see us for funding. Is there anybody else at that time you, as commissioners, would like present? Bonnie. Huh? Bonnie, just the way like Bonnie, to you. whoever you want. Bonnie, too. Okay, so we'll plan on doing that, Sally, of uh, inviting them at our next meeting. And did you have something? Sure. 
Um, to dovetail on the budget prep, I think this is the perfect time. We've been dancing around the conversation of strategic planning, and I think the time is now to really start looking, as we're looking at our budget moving forward, to start the basis of some actual strategic planning. Um, so I would like to, to explore that in our next meeting and then maybe you know, look at getting a consultant or somebody in that's going to help us on a professional level with that. Okay, so we've got any, let's, if we can vet that at this point in time, um, who, who, Commissioner Shanefield would like uh, to have further discussion, agenda item at the next meeting for uh, the strategic planning, uh, thoughts of the other commissioners. You okay with it? Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody just, okay. All right, so please on the agenda item, we'll have a uh, discussion of strategic planning and moving it forward. And that's for the county. Yes. Okay, thank you. We'll put it on and we'll look at it. Okay. Anything else? No, thank okay, you. very good. Yeah, and I think we can also, dealing with the budget after Ron and Rob and uh, Dave are done, we can talk about how we want to <coughs> work on the budget. If we all experienced, did you experience last year? South no, Georgia? I came in right after. You did afterwards, <laughs> but Jeff and and uh, Roy did, and I and Commissioner Johnson myself did. So. At that point in time, we can say, hey, do we want to continue or change how we're doing things? Okay. Also, uh, <clears throat> Judge Lavery will be with us at the uh, next meeting. And let me hand that stuff out. It's uh, He called me up and visited with me. He'd like to come in and visit with us about the uh, district court. There's a, here's a uh, <clears throat> workload spreadsheet for everybody that he shared with me. He'll come in and, and talk more about that, but the time has come in his mind that uh, it's time to address it, whether, you know, whether it's full-time, part-time, shared within the uh, District 3 area, and there are implications of that, and those, the primary implication of it is uh, preparation of that area to uh, house a third district court, not even a courtroom, but also a third district judge. So he'll be in to talk to us about that. So what, what those implications are um, as uh, we move forward with that particular topic. And finally, you should be happy about that. <laughs> the rough, we received a uh, notification from the rocket miner regarding our desires for they put out a legislative guide and, they, and a progress edition and they contact us every year uh, um, we haven't done it for a while um, and that type of thing it's, uh, it's just a matter of if we move forward and then it's a matter of somebody being able to do it, uh, the uh, group we thought I'll pass this along, and if uh, that's something we want to talk about here, and well, here's the strange part: the deadline is passed. It's January 17th. <laughs> Who was in charge of that? <laughs> I just got the notice in my <laughs> after the last meeting, so. With that in mind, that takes care of that. We'll take care of that. Right? I should have read that quicker, but I still think you need to be informed about what's going, what's happening. And then, as I promised you, there's a copy of the legislative bills that are on the WCCA tracking site. There may be more to add as it moves forward. Um, the reason I hand those out to you is it's just that's what we go down there for. But at our uh, conference to have conversation for support, oppose, or monitoring those bills and that type of thing. I'm sure there'll be more to add. Um, I don't know if you, you need to let me know if you want to take time to have discussions about these bills, but I might remind you we have one more meeting after today. And that brings to mind that if we do any, anything with workshops as well as uh, that type of thing, we'll uh, we need to get a notice in the out to have the special workshops and that out there 
and uh, go from there. So, um, and right now our legal paper is the Star, Green River Star, and their notification, or their deadlines are noon on Tuesday to get anything in their paper. But again, too, when it comes to, I believe, and um, John, you can help me out a little bit, um, but when it comes to special meetings or places where we know there's going to be all five of us or more than, or three or more, we can notify the advertising agencies for them to decide if they want to advertise or not. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, so it's just a matter of notifying them and then of course they'll have to decide. Now, are we, when we notify them, are we bound for payment if they choose to advertise it or not? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think the the duty is for notification. I would I would say that it it would be appropriate to pay for the Green River, uh, whoever the uh, <coughs> the newspaper of record is. Okay. Uh, otherwise, I think that um, everybody else get it's their choice whether they uh, how they advertise if they advertise. That's the important right. part. There is to provide the notice. Provide the notice to them. To them in right. the appropriate amount of time, but whether it gets Correct. published or not, that's Correct. not our concern. Correct. All right. Thank you. All right. <coughs> With that, if there's no more questions, I will close. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Next up, Mr. Shanefield. So um, I've spent a significant um, amount of time in meetings around Six Penny. Um, obviously, I've been tweaking going forward um, later in our meeting today. Um, the museum board uh, had a meeting last week and then I also have a meeting on Thursday um, with the city of Green River and the museum um, to discuss the potential grant um, to repair the depot um, and that may be a possible um, place for the museum to move into. Um, we were... <laughs> I was under the impression that it was further along in the grant process, but it is not. Um, and so Christina has been um, having a few conversations around the grant and what you know the actual needs of the grant are. Um, the city of Green River doesn't have a grant writer currently, and so I wanted to sit down with them and, and see what their goals were moving forward and ensure that that was um, in the best interest of the museum and the county. Um, and then I'll report back on that once we get some things lined out. Um, the museum storage is thinking they will be able to move. Um, the, everything is almost completed to move the rest of the county's uh, port items out of that storage area. And so they're thinking uh, spring will be the time that they're able to move their storage, which is really exciting for them. They're excited to get this stuff out of the storage that it's currently in. So that's, that's a big update for them. Um, I do plan on attending the legislative session that entire week of the 10th through the 14th. So if there's any bills, anything that people would like to have discussion with with me about ahead of time, please reach out to me. Um, I would love to meet with you and hear what our county's concerns are around um, this, this session upcoming. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to talk about um, will be requested to be on our next agenda, and that's the SEDC. Um, in, um, multiple meetings, the board has unanimously voted to attempt to move SEDC um, for resources under the county umbrella. Um, this would resolve a significant number of things. Um, it would be a cost savings due to the fact that we already have the office space, we already have the phone, um, a computer will be minimal, the health insurance um, and benefits are much cheaper because we have a, a larger um, organization and more people, more employees. And so currently the cities are planning on resolutions at their meetings tonight. Um, I felt that that was appropriate for them to make resolutions prior to it coming in front of the commission for approval um, to ensure that both cities are on board. Um, they are strongly supportive of this. They want to give SEDC the support that it needs to move forward um, and 
still have you know a, a little say in um, in what the actions moving forward of SEDC are going to be. Um, they would like to remain actively involved in economic development um, in our county, and they also have committed to continuing the financial support of the program at the levels that we all are currently. So right now, it will be it would just be a transition of location and support and allocation of services. If we need to write a grant, Christina can assist in that. If we need, you know, some GIS mapping, it's right here in the building. Um, the resources are here, and I think that moving forward, this is going to be an exciting an exciting growth period for SEDC. Um, I always say you can't keep doing the same thing over and over and expect a different result. And so I think that this is a, a great transition for something that's been considered kind of a standalone and hasn't really been given allocation or assistance to move forward. And our board is pretty excited about it. Good. And with that, if there's any questions, yes. As you know, I've, I've not been a strong supporter of SEDC. Uh, it smells like sweet again all over. And you, it was your words. You just, I agree with what you said. Are we going to do the same thing over? The issue that I have with it is, and I, and I don't want to get into a discussion because we're going to have that discussion. The thing you did not say clearly is that we're going to take over and we're going to incur another employee just to do this. I think that's significant. We need to look at that. Uh, we've uh, taken great pains to reduce the cost of county government, and this is going the other way. And I can understand why the cities are for it. This is not going to cost them anything. We're going to incur the costs, the total costs. And uh, then we, there's a lot of other issues. But the biggest question I've got, or not a question, a uh, concern I've got is that we're going to incur another employee. And I, I have problems with it. I'll make it up. But we'll discuss it. <laughs> no, we, we can discuss that. And we've had discussion around that. I, I, it's actually going to save, I think, all three entities money, um, even though we will be great because we've been financing it at 30000 annually, but we can have that discussion. Okay. Very good. Good, good. good comments. So any other comments? Anything else? All right. There's another comment from Mr. Shainfield. We'll move on. And Mr. Smith. Thank you. <coughs> um, Airport board meeting. Uh, good news out of the airport uh, is uh, Devin's worked with um, FlexJet. They're a fractional ownership company, that, uh, so you get partial ownership of private jets, and they've been um, hangering at the airport, which is brought in great revenue lately, and um, paid dividends for that hangar that, uh, that was built. And he's also working uh, currently with, or trying to, trying to work with NetJets, a much larger company, to see if they will uh, have a desire to come and and uh, provide revenue for us as well. So it's a good job there. We appreciate that and, and the help that it's been there. And it's, it has helped um, quarterly and monthly as well to, since they've been, been coming up to the airport. So finances have been great there. Uh, the hospital board meeting. Um, there are some uh, concern, I guess, that Irene and Marty um, were concerned about the 2020 finances, not in a oh, gee, we're heading the wrong way and we're going to run out of money or anything like that, but just not quite achieving the goals that they had hoped to, that they had set for themselves and had hoped to reach. And so um, Marty, being the head of the um, Finance and Audit Committee, has asked some hard questions and, that, and um, looking to the staff to bring back some answers of what, what's going to change, how are things going to, um, what can I do a little bit differently to point in the right direction. So it's great to hear that and the emphasis on that. Um, also have a budget workshop coming up with them shortly. That'll be a good time in February, it always is. And um, they also talked about looking at becoming a critical access hospital. And the reason for that is because it receives a higher reimbursement rate uh, from CMS. And so they had done that in the past and it ran into a few roadblocks. One of those was um, Aspen Mountain being uh, having a Medicaid number at the time, uh, which they're going to look into. We don't think that they have that anymore, and so that could be the first step in perhaps becoming a critical access hospital. You can't have another hospital within 30 miles of, 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 uh, of your facility that has a Medicaid number. So 
just some things that they're doing there and working hard on to try to make sure that the finances are heading the right direction. And it, it just feels good. There's a lot of attention being paid and um, a lot of good people on that board over there, so I appreciate their work. Just wanted to point that out to them. Uh, and finally, the Red Tide Gala coming up a uh, week from Saturday. We are the current uh, owners of the Golden uh, Bed Town of Shame. <laughs> and uh, so I would ask, um, don't have to have answer, but just is there support to do something, uh, make a donation, and whoever's donation makes the least amount of money uh, at the Red Tide Gala, raises the least amount of money, gets the bed kind of shame for the next year. So if there's interest in that, um, feel free to let me know, and I'd try my best to put something together and give it into the, into the auction just to help support uh, the Red Tide Gala. Thank you. Anything else? <laughs> That's what I have. That's what you have. Thank you, Commissioner Thank you. Smith. Commissioner Johnson. First, I have the Public Works Department to report. I'll read it for the public's benefit. You each have a copy of this. Uh, uh, parks, going through the annual park assessment with Chris and Bradford so that we can start planning projects and budgeting for capital needs in the, each of the parks. Buildings working through the latest round of updates on the new solutions program. We are hoping to go live with the program the second week of February. In the engineering area, scheduling, putting a master yearly schedule together to see what we need to do to build for the yearly maintenance projects and how they are going to overlap so that I can plan on construction management before us. Also working on a master maintenance schedule so that William Bridge can accomplish all of the summer repair projects in a timely fashion. I think this is something that you've uh, kind of thought we should do, uh, Doc, and I think Warren brought it up also, and Gene and Gene's very good at doing this, and he started to do it, and I think it's uh, really all this budget, the budgeting process. Yeah. Road and Bridge, I hate to say it, but we are almost caught up on snow flying. <laughs> We're going back and creating more snow grates and storage areas to start preparing for what are historically the, stu the two snowiest months of the year. Again, uh, he's uh, become somewhat of a weather forecaster. <laughs> I don't know how he knows, but he knows, I guess. Uh, next, uh, on the 10th, I attended the CLG meeting with Kimmer, and some of the issues that uh, are uh, facing uh, the CLG, where we interface with both the Bureau of Land Management and the Forest Service in preparation for the Rock Springs IMP is the, the funding that we're going to get or should get to the state for Fenorca funding and uh, there's been a problem with uh, with that relative to the, I don't know whether it's a problem we have with the governor or whether we have it with the staff, but we're trying to work through that and figure that out, but it's, it could be very detrimental to the future of the CLG. On the 15th, I met uh, along with uh, our CLG consultant, uh, Richard Stem, who's a Fort Worth retired, retired Forest Service employee, and uh, Mark Cott. We met with BLM relative to the Greater Little Mountain area. And the primary issue is whether there's commercial logging capabilities uh, on top of those two mountains, being Little Mountain and Pine Mountain. Uh, the judgment being has been made that there are not. I think that's a, a good judgment. Uh, but then the next step is uh, fuels management on those two mountains. Uh, and I think that uh, this is uh, a benefit to us because there's the possibility that we might be able to clean up uh, those two mountains with the uh, dead timber that's on those two mountains. Uh, one of the issues that brought up by the BLM is they're still continuing to do uh, juniper, juniper thinning, which I strongly disagree with the thinning junipers along the uh, bottoms of uh, and along the sides of the mountains, both Little Mountain and uh, some of the other areas there, while on top uh, we've got these areas where we get a lightning strike or something, we're going to get a very significant forest fire out there that would be detrimental to, to those two mountains. There's a meeting tonight, a uh, presentation tonight on the uh, Greater Little Mountain area the video that's been prepared. Uh, there's going to be a panel discussion after that. I will, I will, I will participate in that. Uh, I'll reiterate my feelings about Little Mountain. I think it's the crown jewel of Sweetwater County and we need to take care of it. Uh, the other issue
issue that I think that uh, is very significant to us that's, that's out there is these migration corridors. And I've given you a, a copy of the, <coughs> I indicated in the last meeting on the Wyoming Wildlife article that was on there on Highway 28. And, and one of the things that, uh, that, let me back up a little bit and tell you what you might not know is the, the Upper Holdback to Red Desert Migration Corridor runs from Teton County through Sublet County into Sweetwater County. And these migration corridors can have some detrimental effect on the, uh, and I'll just use as an example, the oil and gas industry because of some of the discussion that's been held is no surface occupancy in some of these areas. That's not in best interest, in my opinion, in Sweetwater County. So one of the thoughts that I've had is when you when you talk about a corridor, what is a corridor? Uh, it's similar, I, mean, I, I put it like a, we have a corridor out here in front of this building, or in front of this uh, that runs from this office down to the clerk's office, for example. That's a corridor. The destination that you use that corridor is to get into the clerk's office. It's the same thing that's happening with with this migration corridor coming out of Teton County. The thing that I, I that's dawned on me, and the way that Sweetwater County can avoid the negative impacts of that, it's Highway 28, which we've been working with for a, for a long while. But if you were to say that that corridor ends at Highway 28 and those deer and animal can then get in the Sweetwater County, into the Red Desert, they can go anywhere they want. There is no reason, in my opinion, to protect them once they're in the Red Desert. Now that's controversial, and, and that's a new thought that I've had. But that gets us out of the problem that is going to be faced in Sublet County primarily with how, how, in, how they're going to remove the bottle, what they call bottlenecks. The biggest bottleneck is Pinedale itself. They, they have problems getting uh, past Fremont Lake and, and, and Pineville and developments occurring. That's a bottleneck. Highway 28 is a barrier. If we can get those animals over Highway 28, there's no need for, for them to have any protection in, in, the, in the Red Desert. It's just like, that's the destination. That is the destination of those animals, both the uh, deer and antelope and, some, and to some uh, aspect, the elk also. It's like it, once, once you get down to the clerk's office, you're in trouble, I know that. But uh, anyway, <laughs> you, you, do, you do get there, and there's no need to have that corridor go any further. And that's what I'm suggesting on this migration corridor that they're talking about, which is the, the number one corridor that's being discussed in the whole state of Wyoming. And uh, there's been a, uh, the governor's made a proclamation on that as to what needs to be done with it. It's still in draft form, I guess, but uh, I think that has some neg negative, negative impacts on Sweetwater County, and, and I don't really know how to get around it. But I think one of the first things we need to do is remove the barrier, which is Highway 28 so in some fashion. And this article I've given you shows what they're doing with the uh, right-of-way fencing uh, modifications. And I, I applaud the Wyoming uh, the, uh, uh, Highway Department and Game and Fish for, for working with us on that. We're the ones that uh, put forward the, the impetus that's got it to that point. Uh, and I think that uh, probably is all I have. Question? Yeah, you made a comment that a new thought that they disperse into the Red Desert. There will be some pushback, I sensed. Oh, there will be pushback. Mm -hmm. Have you got a feeling for what that pushback is or already or, where, or what it could be? Or? Well, I've got the argument. You know, they're, they're saying, it's, it gets back to what I'm talking about, that quarter out there. A quarter takes you from one point to another point. Okay. Once you, that, once you, the quarter served its purpose, there's no need to protect them, and there's negative impacts that will occur if that corridor is, receives further protection through the Red Desert. Those animals, what those animals are trying to do is, is migrate south for the protection. Animal can't do it because of 28, but the deer can and the elk can. Then they get stopped again at, at the interstate. Uh, in my opinion, there should be an overpass on the interstate so they can actually go further south. That's a bigger that's a bigger hurdle for us to get over. 
and, and I have some thoughts about how oil and gas, if I can get them on board with, with what these thoughts are, is that we would give them the PR that they need, because that's who we're trying to protect. Well, we're not trying to protect the oil and gas industry. We're trying to protect those jobs that are there, the quality jobs that they create. It's in good times, it's 40% of our economy. But if we can get the oil and gas industry to help fund those overpass, at least one overpass, there, Game of Fish thinks we need two, but to get one overpass on Highway 28, and, and, you know, give them credit for that. Just put on that overpass, courtesy of BP, courtesy of Exxon, courtesy of whoever's paying for that. That would be good PR for them, and it's in the best interest of a very valuable asset for the governor, and I agree with him on that. It's a, those animals are an asset to the state of Wyoming, so they deserve protection also. And, but I think there's a way to do it. It can be done, and I think uh, we need to continue to be proactive. I think the people that are going to push back are the NGOs, uh, whom we have a good relationship with, because the, I think they're going to disagree with that. But I, I think uh, I, I have an argument for that. Okay, very good. I'll just you know, because as we get out to. Bring, now that this brought up, if we get out to this commission, we're going to have conversations. And I've kind of, and you shared it, I've kind of sensed where, where not only where it's going to come from, but what is probably going to be their issues. And I appreciate that. Well, it gets back to there are places we can drill and should drill. Yes. And I've said that before, and obviously it's in Sublet County, is where it's occurring with the uh, MPL and uh, Jonah and the Pine Atlantic Club. But the revenue stream that runs out of that runs into Sweetwater County. That's the real corridor. And that, that's a revenue stream out of those fields into Sweetwater County. Very good. But uh, I, I think uh, the oil and gas industry should understand we're trying to help them, not hinder them. Because I think the way that that migration corridor team is being put together by the governor has some drawbacks. For example, can you imagine us trying to get uh, agreement with Teton County? as to who should be on that committee. You know, Wyoming has 22 counties in Sweet and then the Teton. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's true. That's very true. All right, thank that's you. Right. All right, very good. Commissioner Smith. Well, do you have any idea of what, a, what an overpass, the, the cost would be for an overpass? Several million dollars. Uh, it depends on the terrain, uh, where you put it. Uh, for example, if you put it in a flat area, it's going to be more expensive, but if you've got a, a draw or something and you put it, it's, it's less. Uh, the, the, the underpass is cheaper, but uh, it's very difficult to get some of those man, an, animals to go under, uh, uh, under a highway. Sure. But the, the point I'd make is if, if we can get the state of Wyoming in conjunction with the oil and gas industry to, to, to pay for these things, uh, What's a reasonable cost? I what are those animals worth? Plus, all the accidents that are occurring, the deaths that are occurring with the, uh, with the collisions between those animals and, and automobiles. So uh, it's a significant number. I'm not an expert on it, but I know it's in the pits. It's probably several million. The thing you need to look at to see whether it's viable or not are these overpasses that have been built in Sublet County. They're very, very effective. You know what they might be. Thank you. Any other questions? One more. Different subject. Working out of uh, planning and zoning with Eric um, Bingham, have, have we heard anything regarding the uh, industrial siting impact for uh, ExxonMobil status? Yes. Uh, matter of fact, he gave me some uh, preliminary numbers from the meetings he's had. The, uh, what, what Lincoln County thinks we should do, and I, I agree with him, uh, is we split that 50-50 between Lincoln County and in uh, Sweetwater County. That facility is in Lincoln County. We need to keep that in mind. And if they're willing to split that with us, and it's, it's not a significant amount of a million dollars is significant, I guess. Yeah. To me, it would be a little bit of relatively careful. But we, we, what I think our position should be and continue to be is we'll split that with Lincoln County. But uh, to do that, the first blush of the meeting that was held was that uh, uh, fire people and sheriff for uh, fairly significant busting that budget. So there's there's a meeting today with Eric and that group is going to be meeting on it with them. So we'll see where that goes. But if we're not to the point where uh, we're ready to go to the industrial side. Okay. Do are we to the point? Your visitation with Eric. Are we to the point where we 
need to uh, consider uh, assigning a uh, uh, point commissioner of that committee? We're going to have to do that. It's, uh, I would suggest we do that similar to what we did with the uh, Trans West and uh, the other power line, I forget which west that is. Gateway. Gateway West. Uh, do the same thing. It's, uh, it's not so significant, I don't think, with uh, with the Exxon project, but it's going to be very significant with the Jenner Gen yeah. project. All right, so the difference in the you'll keep us appraised to that and bring it forward. And this meeting today will kind of get that in a preliminary point where we're going to have to, this commission is going to have to agree with you. That's where we want to go. Okay, very good. It's in, it's in discussion now, similar to what we did with Trans West. We look forward to moving forward on that because that that will, you know, it's a million dollars. It's a million more than what somebody has. Right. That's so right. we want to. And it's industrial kids impact monies. And yeah. Obviously, mm -hmm. who's being impacted? Mm -hmm. uh, we're being impacted. Uh, yep. But I think bigger impact is in the and more than fair. The first the first blush was that let's split it fifty fifty. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. That's all I have. Any other questions? Mr. Johnson. Mr. Lord, you're up. Okay. Um, a couple of things. Um, last week I attended the Chamber of Commerce meeting. It was very interesting because they um, had a legislative forum to, pre to preempt up, up before the legislature. Um, Senators in Selby and uh, Baldwin and Representative Stith, uh, Freeman and Blake all presented what they saw as the big issues coming up in the local legislature. Uh, so that was a great opportunity to get insight as we prepare for it. A couple other things. I've met with uh, Karen uh, Kelly. I'll be meeting with, uh, John doesn't know it, but we'll be meeting in the next day or two uh, with Attorney Jay Leone. Um, regarding a project Karen's been working on for about three to five years on, on file retention. And I think we've got enough information now to be able to move forward. So I'm really excited to help Karen with that project. I've had a library board meeting. Um, uh, can things continue to go with, well with the library? Uh, uh, they've, they've now at uh, the Rock Springs Library have moved all the books upstairs and the bottom area is completely clear um, in preparation to start the Children's um, Discovery Center. And I think well, there's been a lot of local business and entities. I know the airport has made a contribution. Um, uh, it's really going to make this an amazing option. And I can't, and it's really great to see um, um, what they're doing there at the library. And I think. Um, uh, Mr. Johnson had talked about employees in the community, in the county, and how our numbers have gone down if we become more efficient. The library actually has like 20 less full-time employees now than they did left three, uh, you know, like um, uh, three to five years ago. And what they're doing and the innovations they're using are, are, are really amazing. To see they're still offering quality services in different ways, but finding efficiencies to do it. So a lot of kudos to um, Jason Grubb and his board of directors. There was Star uh, last week. Um, Star, went, really no major issues going along with Star at this point. Uh, it continues to operate fairly well. Um, the events complex, um, we do have a meeting coming up next week. But I do want to make mention that um, they will be presenting today um, regarding um, a possible budget amendment based upon the increase in insurance. And this is something when we um, when we made our budget, we had seen as a possible oversight, and that was something that also affected Southwest Counseling and um, the, uh, the library and um, the events complex. So as they come in today, uh, you know, we'll have this discussion when we get there, right? Historically, um, it's my understanding that the commission has funded those component agencies on the insurance, but we really take a look at that request today and look at how it's impacted those other agencies because I think that's a significant issue. So um, and we'll discuss that when we get there. Um, throughout the rest of the week, um, um, the Six Penny has been um, um, uh, a lot of, I've met with multiple entities just on where they're at with their Six Penny, just looking at ideas on I thought I came up with a pretty foolproof method I would actually share today, which I still think is really solid. I actually went to um, County Treasurer Rob Slaughter just because he's been around for a long time, and um, he's confused me a little bit because he threw some other ideas out today. So as we sit up here, if I look perplexed, I'm trying to decide if my idea is better or Rob's. And I don't want to go in public what I decided the answer is. So whatever the right answer was, it's the one I came up with. But, <laughs> but, um, um, but I do think. Um, um, but that has been an important process. Um, uh, the other thing, done some research on SCBC. Um, 
preparing into some of the stuff that uh, might be coming along. I wanted to do my own research to be prepared to make the best education we have. So I met with Rick Lee and I met with um, um, I've met with Rick Lee and Kayla, um, um, and I've also reached out to Dave Hanks, who we played some phone tag with, um, because I think he also will have some good insight to the situation. Um, the last, and as I circle back to six penny, I missed something in my notes. Um, I know it's a small number, and it's not always the most accurate. But I want to give some kudos to Sweetwater now for putting out the poll on the six penny, and I actually reached out to Gary, and he actually sent me back the responses. And even though the, the, uh, some of the percentages really surprised me, and, and I'll be honest, it hasn't really swayed where I sit, but seeing the responses, I think, have been where <laughs> it's very good. Thanks for being relaxed. Thanks for being relaxed. I'm not changing my mind. No, what I'm saying is, like, well, be my, well, just be honest, I think I was really surprised and they were willing to go with a longer period of time. That's where I, you know, when, when I talk to constituents, I still feel the number is lower than these. Some of their numbers show like 90% of people were willing to go 140, 150 million. And when I talk to people, I haven't seen that same value. And so, but where I think the value comes to that poll really comes from the comments or what the constituents are saying and their actual comments. And I, I think that was very good. And if any of the commissioners would like that information, I'd be glad to forward that to you. Gary put it in the spreadsheet for me. So I thought that was very helpful. Um, I'd be willing to share that information. And then the last thing is, um, is uh, you know, I've now been a commissioner for um, a year to, this is uh, two meetings, and um, this is the fullest house we've seen. And whether I agree, and I can tell you why I know the majority of you are here, just knowing who you are. So we can, we'll just put that predictor out. But whether I agree with your issues or disagree with your issues, it's exciting for me to see people come forward to these meetings and sharing their opinions and their thoughts, because it does affect us, even though I just said it doesn't. Um, <laughs> And so I'm glad to see you guys here to represent your issues because that's what helps guide us. So um, I really do like the packed house. So um, thank you. And then after break, we'll feel less important when half of you guys leave. But uh, <laughs> I do appreciate you guys being here and to share your views. So that's um, that's all I have. Questions? Yeah, I think that comments, not necessarily questions. First one, you deal with slaughter. You go in there with your thoughts put in one direction. He puts a spin on it. You leave his office talking to yourself. Never <laughs> once He's done that to me for many, many years. <laughs> He's very, very astute at that. And the other is the feedback. Uh, uh, and I agree with you. You don't want to. You don't want the facts to sway your thinking. Uh, I'm somewhat like that. Too. And I, I, I've had a tremendous amount of feedback on it also, but it's different than what the public says. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're faced with making those decisions. So you have to gather in everything you can. Appreciate what you're doing. All right, very good. And the last thing I'd probably throw out is I also want to just once again throw out thanks to um, former Commissioner uh, Marine West, who I've reached out a couple two times to once again about the six penny and with his history as a cha the chairman of the six penny and and ran running that committee. He's had a lot of great insights. So um, um, I can tell you a lot of what I've come up with. Um, Reed's really been a good, good influence and knowledge base, so thanks to those guys. So Reed good, Rob not so much. Rob, you feel no, good. Rob's good. <laughs> just the problem is Rob gives me his idea like at 8.15, 15 minutes before the meeting. It's, all, it's Martin Luther King Day fall because I was the, um, because we couldn't meet yesterday. It was, it's a federal holiday for governmental employees, unless you're about profits and then you work every day. And then, um, <laughs> but with that being said, um, so now I've had to spin my head a little bit because Rob does have some good ideas and so I may make two presentations today, so we'll see. All right, that's very good. Any other comments? Or Mr. Mayor, can I defend myself for just a second? <laughs> what you do? <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, <laughs> first of all, in respect of what Commissioner Johnson said, he's right. I haven't done that for many years. <laughs> I do that on purpose, to keep right. everybody off balance. With respect to Commissioner Lloyd's comments, what he did was he called me at the end of the week last week and asked me <laughs> if I would evaluate some ideas that he had and we talked and I said yes I, and I agree with very a, a great majority of what his <laughs> things were but I said you know I would kind of look at it just a little bit differently so 95% of what he had come up with I kind of agreed with I just put a little spin on a little bit of that and the first chance I had to talk with him was this morning when I came into the office at 8 o'clock because we didn't have work yesterday. He couldn't call me at home, but he didn't do that. 
And it's, you go ahead. No, I'm fine. All right. Otherwise, I do appreciate it. <laughs> and for the record, and for those that are listening, that was our uh, county treasurer, Rob Slaughter. So thank you, Rob. Uh, with that in mind, any other comments? Any questions? Uh, I think at this time we will go ahead and move in. We're scheduled at 9.30 for county resident concerns. I just want to remind the board that at 9.45 the tab uh, F um, agenda item with Judge Prokost will be by phone call, and that's when he'll be available. So um, uh, we'll move into county residence concerns, though, at this time. And as we move into the first thing I would ask is that uh, how many people, please raise your hand if you're here to comment. How many people want to comment? One, two, three, four. Okay, very good. We're, we're, we should be okay then. If there's a whole lot, I, I would put a very short time limit, not very, but short time limit, but we should be able to cover everybody's needs and give you each about three to four minutes, okay? So if you uh, decide to come up and comment, please uh, sit or stand in the front row. Please introduce yourself and who you're with, and uh, please address the uh, commission um, that way. Thank you. I'm a Kate and I'm a small business owner by QLLC. I'm also a real estate agent. Uh, before I begin, I want to address the notion that the public records are available for free under the basic, basic search online. That basic search only shows indexing information. With that said, for the last few sessions, I have heard the commissioners state they do not oversee or have authority over the clerk. As a county commissioners, you're authorized to make policies for our county and are elected to serve and protect the citizens. Wyoming State Statute 18-3-402 says the county clerk is a clerk to the commissioners. And the Section F states the clerk shall perform the other duties as required by the Board of County Commissioners. Wyoming Statute 18-2-101 says the powers of the county shall be exercised by the Board of County Commissioners. In other words, the commissioners generally supervise and oversee the county clerk and therefore have the authority to overturn the fees. The definition of a restriction is a limitation. Prior to November 2019, we had unlimited access to public records online from any time and anywhere. Since then, we've been limited to either paying an outrageous fee or having to come during designated hours to the county records office. Again, the de definition of a restriction is a limitation, and the public is asking the county commissioners to create a policy that prohibits any county official from restricting or limiting access to public records. Ms. Lane stated that the IDOC market's fees are to pay for the service. However, it's been established the fees are a profit that is being split 60-40 and 80-20 with Tyler Technologies. In Tyler Technologies' amendment, it states the maintenance fees are invoiced and paid annually prior to the service. That was back in July. It mentions nothing about the split or percentage being applied for the annual cost of maintenance or service. In fact, the profit that is being made goes to the county general fund and is not under the authority or to, for her to delegate how it's spent. She admits that she doesn't know how much the revenues or fee, the fees will create, but feels that the users should be responsible for the freeze. Are you aware that the IDOC market is being used by our county officials as part of their job duties? Obviously, these services contribute to the function of our county's office, and because of that, it's the taxpayer's obligation for the service, not the user's. Let me remind you of why the digital records exist in the first place. It was to preserve county records. This service was not provided to meet the needs of a small number of people. As Ms. Lane states, but in, uh, advance our county through technology for the benefit of the entire county, along with its employees. The ca this was a capital project and was determined to be necessary over 10 years ago and was properly funded by our taxes to ensure protection against the loss of vital records for the generations to come. Upon reading the contract with Tyler Technologies, this has been an ongoing contract for over 10 years. The upgrade costs, were to <laughs> the upgrade costs to IDOCs to incorporate were to incorporate training and software for the county's office. The total was $3,355. The $776,000 project is U.S. Imaging, who has been employed to come in and actually scan the records from the hard copies to the digital format from 1985 all the way back to 1891. U.S. Imaging and Tyler Technologies IDOX 5 are two different things. We're being told that those fees are going to be paying for U.S. technology. That's a benefit of the county. I'm asking you to exercise your authority over the county clerk provided by law and reverse these fees. Before I close, I would like to state that the letter from my lawyer 
to the county was in, to notify the county that these fees violate the Wyoming state laws. The letter contained the statutes that govern the electronic records, public records, and the duties of the county clerk. A lawsuit has not been filed. It is our hope that these statutes be carefully, carefully read and actually be taken to correct the issue. Thank you. And yes. I did give you guys a copy so you can read them. Please. And I don't know if you guys had a copy of the lawyer letter, but I included that as well. Thank you. We will, okay. we will definitely have our attorney look at your letter. The letter that was sent to us again, as they are, I think, in the process of doing so. Yep, no problem. All right. All right. And thank you very much. Any questions? Go ahead. I tend to agree with everything you said. Uh, and I was, in, I was underway of in, uh, polling people that use those, that problem, those, uh, taking advantage of those benefits. But then this issue of the legality of the loss and potential came up. But I, I think you have, the public has a right to question what we did, because we, we funded that with taxpayers' dollars. And I think we need to look at that and make sure we agree with what is being done, whether it's fair or not. And as a commissioner, I will do that. And I will be very vocal at the appropriate time what I think is fair and what is not fair. I think the benefit, the biggest benefit <coughs> for that process, the people benefited, benefiting the most are those people in Dallas and Houston that can look at that from down there. And the people in Sweetwater County should not be the ones that are paying for it. And my comment. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. <laughs> thank you. Any other commissioner? At this time, yeah. So thank you. We will continue to look at it. Go I would like to respond to that. They're, they're charging people out of state, but this county paid for those records. That's right. We paid for them already. We paid through them fees, our taxes, and now we got to pay to use them when it's it's our, it's our this is for our county. Believe me, I understand. Okay. And our, in, in this commission, we'll listen, as Commissioner Johnson said, know, to what people have to say, and uh, we will, you know, look at it, and then we will do the right thing. All right. Well, thank you. My biggest, my biggest thing was is that it's been said that this Tyler IDOX upgrade was all these thousands of dollars. It was three thousand three hundred and fifty-five dollars. It's in the Tyler Technologies. If you guys would like to copy of that? I have some of those too. There's only a couple, uh, and it's it's absolutely different than the U.S. imaging, which is you can't say that that's only affecting or impacting ninety-two people. That's for this entire county. Whether you own a car or house or property or anything else, it's sitting in that county office over there, and that scanning in process is for all of us. So, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Miss Inman. Uh, anybody else from the? Yes, please come forward, identify yourself, and who you're with. My name is Kate Neal, and respectfully, yeah. I have never done this before. Mm -hmm. It's just an opinion of mine. I think as a government, um, we are moving forward with technology. Um, myself, I do everything on paper. That's old. I'm working in an office now where everybody's young. They do everything over the computer with their phone. And as I can see here, you're probably paper. <laughs> but it's a movement forward. And I don't think that our young people or any of our um, Companies should be paying for something that our government is doing anyway and should be doing is updating our information. It's the way of the world. Um, I think our government should be paying for that. I think it has been paid. Um, I don't think that um, it sounds like a little business proposition to me. And I'm, I'm just saying that's just my naive part. Um, so I would appreciate it if the lawyers, the commissioners, Ms. Lane, would really take that into consideration as far as in the cost. Great. Thank you. Any other comments? <coughs> Community? Any other comments? Please come up. Identify yourself and who you're with, please. Good morning. My name is Brian Morensic. Thank you, Brian. Um, my thoughts on this issue. And I get the idea that the landmen and the guys, the oil guys, are accessing this information for free and they're not taxpayers. But if you look at the process of how we access these 
public documents, and once you get through with digitizing all of them, is the commission aware that right now, okay, if you go to the county clerk's office, it's free to access the documents. You have to pay to print, or 50 cents, whatever. And right now, as it stands, if you access a document post 86, those are already digitized, and we're digitizing everything pre-82, 86, somewhere around there. Well, right now, if you go down to the county clerk's office and you access something post-86, you get on IDOC. You actually use their system and use the IDOC to access it. And so once I would think that, and all of the county departments that access public records use IDOC. They log on to the same website. So if you want to use it for free, and once these are all digitized, I'm assuming that everybody is going to access these records through IDOC. So it seems kind of odd that I have to pay to, I have to use the same service for my house to access a document, but if I drive down to the county clerk's office, I'm going to get on their computer and access the same thing, and now I don't have to pay. Right? It just doesn't make sense, and it adds a cost to me I have to, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the point I want to make. Yes, it, it, it's unfortunate that some non-taxpayers get to use that service for free, but to penalize us for those guys doesn't seem right. And it's counterintuitive that I'm going to log on to the same internet for free if I drive down there, but I can't do it for my house. So that's my problem. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming in. Okay. Any other comments? Any other comments? Yes, ma'am. Identify yourself and who you're with. Um, my name is Mandy Oliver. Thanks, Mandy. Thank you. Um, I am a Sweetwater County citizen. Um, it happened for 10 years. Um, I did previously <coughs> use the system. I, I actually enjoyed how the system worked. You printed off the paper or contacted the county clerk's office, chose a username, chose a password, signed a Sign the release form that you weren't going to be inappropriate or naughty with the information that was provided there. Um, I think that was a pretty good system. I thought it worked well, and I'd like to see that come back. I'd like to. I, I think we can have access for um, Sweetwater County citizens um, at zero cost, maybe using that system. And those who are out of state would only know of access through IDOX and paying a fee. I'd like to see that reinstated if possible. Thank you. Appreciate hearing that. Thank you. Any other citizen concerns at this time? Yes. My name is Warren Winter. I'm a hey, Warren. How are you? I am in real estate. Um, my kind of question or concern on this whole fee being charged to us is where did the information or the data come to bring us to that, that rate? I'd like to, I don't know who we could ask you to find that out. You need to visit with the clerk. With the clerk? Clerk, yeah, because okay. she brought it forward. You know, okay. She's the one that has all that information. Also, I just, on a personal my opinion, this kind of feels like double taxation to me. And as a taxpayer, I mean, we all pay taxes. It's getting a little out of hand and crazy. And so I just thought I'd throw that off. No, we're here no more. All right. Thanks, man. Thank you. You bet. Appreciate it. Appreciate your comment. Any other comments, sir? Brian, you? Yeah. Brian, again, can I ask a question? <laughs> can I ask a question on the, the clerk imposing that fee? Um, the clerk's here, but she can ask it through the commission and see if she can answer. I have to. Go ahead. I would like to make the suggestion that we allow our, our county clerk to, to prepare an explanation to all of these. I mean, you guys are spitting, I agree. Yeah. You're spitting information at us and frustrations at us. I don't know if any of you have actually made an appointment to sit down with our county clerk, um, but we're kind of the middleman at this point, and we can't respond directly to you because you're directing your frustrations at Cindy at us. And so... I would suggest that we allow Cindy to come forward um, after she's had the chance to like write down your questions, um, answer them appropriately, and perhaps at the next meeting be able to address some of these concerns for the public that's watching um, and, and those who are in the audience as well. 
and I, I put the spin on that. It's important to have the questions. It's important to have them answered. But at this point in time, we need to involve our legal um, department, uh, our deputy county, so he can advise and guide because there is that uh, notice of possible legal action that's been served. And we have to pay respect to that and make sure how this is handled does not interfere with that type of thing. So be very important, yes. Get the questions, get them to Cindy, make an appointment. And we've got some of them here. Yes, um, with work with the uh, attorney's office, she'll um, get them put together and then at some point in time present them, but only after uh, guidance from the legal department. Fair enough? Uh, it's fair, but actually my question goes specifically to what you just said, which is, or my questions, I have actually several. So, she, the county clerk imposed the fee, and are all our elected departments, clerk, treasurer, assessor, allowed to implement any fee they want at the rates that they want? Is that... That, I think the question, I'm posing that com question to the commission. Okay. Then that would be a good question. You right. pose that. We'll write because it. We'll write I would think a, a, a fee that... Right. Yeah. And just to answer your question, Brian, is that question has been brought up, I think, earlier in the questioning that uh, Ms. Inman has, you know, what, where is that? Uh, um, I think it's only fair for us before we say yes or no on that. Right. I mean, historically, I can tell you where I think the commission has been with regard, but I think we need to take a look, visit with our legal department, mm -hmm. and guide some. You know, right. not going to say anything either way at this point in time because I think it's the wrong thing to do. But I think it's a good time to listen. What are your questions? So that that's the question is, and that question is, they're directly to the clerk's office, but whatever the answer is, it'll reflect the all process. the other elect right. elected officials. Yes, right. the process for any of our elected officials to impose fees on the public yep. are they free to impose whatever fee they would want right because property tax information is well, online can the treasurer impose a fee for us to access that right exactly the planning department zoning regulations are published can they impose a fee to access okay. those yep. the gis mapping server that serve that gets used by a ton of people by especially out of state, right? I don't even know which agency. No, it's 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 opened up a can of worms. Right. So that is a question I would like to answer. The process. And where is the public's opportunity to discuss in those fees when well, they're being implemented? Yeah. If it's not through a public meeting. Through the Go ahead, Mr. Winter made a very good observation. He says double taxation, but I take that a little further, and it answers your question double taxation with representation and we are your representatives I understand that and we, we we're charged with looking at that we're the ones that authorize the, the, the monies that were spent for that we have a problem with this and we need to answer for it I think it's a good idea that Lauren's had let she, she knows what all these questions are let the clerk answer those questions but I I'm not going to dodge the bullet that bullet hits me right between the eyes I understand that and I think it needs to be answered, and we need to be involved in that decision. Yep. That's my opinion. They may not agree with me, but that's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank well, you. And Mr. Johnson, I'll just say it sitting here is, is uh, it needs to look into it exactly, get the question. We need to involve the right people, and we need to answer. Yes, that's why we're all elected and why we're sitting here. You hit the nail right on the head. Um, not any one of us, have I heard, are reluctant to answer any of it or accept responsibility for it what we're hearing is let's do it right let's not shoot from the hip and let's get the questions to the clerk where the clerk then can begin to work and get those answered as well as we do need the input but we've got to move along in such a fashion that we do not impede what's already been started with a notification through by attorneys to our attorneys because that is a whole nother aspect but it doesn't mean we still can't move forward and look at those things fair enough yeah it is fair is there and i understand this is a very broad question but is there 
any way to get some sort of idea on a timeline on this because we don't want it to become a legal issue. But it already somewhat has, so I'm going to refer to our attorney on when you talk timeline. Uh, John DeLeon, our deputy county attorney. Mr. Chairman, um, I expect that, our, I think our hope is that by the next meeting or the one after that, we should be in a position to be able to have Cindy kind of go through these questions. So uh, I'm hoping the next meeting, but uh, I could see where we would be going after that. Okay. That's, that was without that, right, we have to keep coming to every meeting. Right. That's fine. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, right. You see what I mean? Okay. Right. Well, and, and here's where I'm at with it is I think it's important enough that it'll be an agenda item. So you don't have to keep coming to every meeting unless you want to have a concern. Citizens, you're welcome to come, and we want you here. Um, but again, too, it's going to be an agenda item from my standpoint. If you watch the agenda, that's the time to show up. That will definitely hit it. But I do encourage. You're welcome to come just like you came today and we're glad to have you and we we are answerable to our citizens of Sweetwater County period we've asked the question now it's answered yeah so let's get some time next, section, and next get them answered and get them answered right yep. okay fair enough yep. thank you <clears throat> anything else commissioners I, I'd just like to let him know that I started the process I was talking I talked to the title people I talked to the engineering firms I talked to realtors gathering the information what their opinions opinions were relative to the fee schedule but with the threat and I I, I, I don't think you made that threat that's why I'm speaking as much as I am that threat of lawsuit was not we were not threatened just like you said there's a po always a possibility of a lawsuit but until that happens I think I can still speak to that and I started that process to talk to you people the ones that are affected I'm not concerned about Dallas or Houston I am concerned about you. We appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. All right. Well, That'll you. work. Yep. Ms. Sandy. I do just want to say, we don't want to file a lawsuit. We want this resolved. Very that good. is that is flat out. We did it to <clears throat> notify it because I, I had a perception of the laws. I had to have somebody that has legal authority to say, yep, that's what the law says. We have talked to our legislators, and this is not a legislative matter because they've already said the law's written clearly. And it supports exactly what I've been saying. So we don't want a lawsuit. We want this to be resolved, and we want you guys to resolve it. Yeah. So very good. Just, I just wanted to I wanted to push at it. It's going to be resolved a lot quicker if we do it this way than well, having I, to do something like that. I agree. I really don't want to get into that. And everybody here agrees with that. Okay. Know. So Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Any other? Citizens comment. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> okay, identify yourself, please. Mr. Chairman, I don't want to interfere with the tough subject that you're on. I want to talk about something else real briefly. So if if this has let's to do stay with what you're doing, let's Yeah, I think I'm on the Ms. same topic. Okay, very good. Miss <laughs> identify yourself when you get up here, please. My name is Emily Lopez. Um, I own High Country Realty. I'm also on the City of Rock Springs Planning and Zoning Commission. And um, I'm very no new to being involved in that and understanding how these processes work. I'm not politically experienced, but one thing that happens when we have those meetings on planning and zoning with an issue that's contentious is we do public notices. The public has a chance to come and say, here's how we feel about it. So it's not that, and, and I have talked to Cindy Lane. She was very helpful. I spoke to her on the phone. She walked me through the system. I tested it out and was able to see it didn't meet the needs that it met before. I really did speak to her and at the end of the conversation. I said, thank you for your time. We agree to disagree. Um, and because of that, you know, it's not that we're attacking you guys. Um, it's just that you're who we have to go to, your representatives. And we didn't have that process before to come and say, hey, I'm not saying it's anyone's fault that it was implemented. It sounds like it went live before it was supposed to on purpose, or uh, not on purpose, on accident. But because we didn't have that opportunity to come to you guys then, now that's why we're doing it now, and you're who our representatives are. So I have talked to Ms. Lane, but I don't agree. And so that's now why we're coming to you guys and asking you to take into consideration the things we have to say we want that access to that public information we had before I worry about someone in Farson who our county is huge we are a county is so big so to have to come to the courthouse to have access to the records you need between 8 and 5 Monday through Friday if you work a traditional job you're taking a day off of work to do 
that. So I think that's very important that our county has access to that information. And we are coming to you guys because we didn't have the opportunity to do that before. And we're pleading to you as our representative. So it's not an attack, it's just you're who we know we can go to. So I appreciate you guys. It seems like you're really taking it into consideration and looking at it. And I appreciate you guys hearing our voice. And I hope you'll continue to look at it and, and remove the fee so our, our county has access to those records we've had access to for 10 years. So thank you guys. Thank you. I appreciate it. Any other comments with dealing with the fees for that are being charged out of clerk's office? We'll finish that one up. Any other comments, public comments? Yes. I'll just say one comment real quick on this. I was born and raised here in Rock Springs, Wyoming, and I love it here. Would you all your name, world. please? And who you're with? Clark. And who you're with? Um, I'm just here as okay. a very good citizen. Thank, thank you. Yet. Sorry for the interruption. Um, one of the thing about having to deal with technology. I can honestly say that's why I retired from the military with 21 years, is because I couldn't keep up with the technology. <laughs> so the fees and everything, that's what everything's going to is technology. And for us to be charged assistance to come and look at anything that we want to that says public record, we should be allowed that right to look at that and not be charged that. Charge the fee that we need to look at just a little chunk of land that we're interested in or something. Very good. So just I appreciate everybody here for for that for that thing for, for the technology and all that, the things that's going on now. Very good. So, Thank you. Appreciate your comment. Thank you folks. Thank you. Anybody else? Anyone else like to comment on Keith? With that, other comments? Mr. Slaughter. Mr. Chairman, just a quick update. Um, I wanted to brief you. At, at your meeting on December 2nd, you had uh, chosen U.S. Bank to move forward with our lease revenue issue for the buildings out on the jail site. And subsequent to that meeting, it was brought to my attention that the county does not own those properties, which was a <laughs> shock to me. I could have used several of these real estate agents to tell me that at that point in time. I, I assume. Is that the system model? Is that the system model? It just didn't make sense to me that we have, we have built $30 million on property that we didn't own, so I didn't even consider that. But nonetheless, <laughs> that threw a wrinkle into our ability to, to use the lease revenue issue moving forward. So I've been working with our bond attorneys, uh, our, our other advisors with respect to how we move forward with this along with the bank because their, their agreement was that we would do this um, and their original proposal was up through the 10th of December. So what, what we've done, we've extended that. I've talked with Mr. Ligurski after, after talking to Commissioner Johnson um, extensively about the properties and, and things of that nature. But what currently is the situation is BLM has ownership of those properties. There is also some state of Wyoming uh, issues that are on this property that we're talking about. In talking with Mr. Ligurski, he's told me that he believes that we should have this taken care of, hopefully by the first part of March. So we have had U.S. Bank come back, look at their proposal, and make sure that they would be willing to continue with their offer to fund that project for us. They did make one minor change. The original proposal that they made was for 2.06% annual rate on their loan. They changed that to 2.09%. Um, I felt like that was very minimal. We, we had then asked them to extend that through the 15th of March. I do have a copy of an offer from them to extend that through that period, and we're continuing to work through that. So I just wanted you to all be aware that that is, we're working on that, and we are aware of what that issue is. Does that uh, offer need to be signed by us? I don't believe so at this point in time. Um, it, it came actually through Stiefel, our representative. Okay. They, they forwarded it on to me at this point in time, and it is viable up through the 50. Okay, that's the only question I have. Mr. Johnson? Yeah, I just, uh, you know, here again, you walk into these, oh, I went through that already. <laughs> <laughs> but we're aware of that. Uh, Gene has been working on that. What we're after is a 50-year lease on that. That's what we've had before. The only reason this didn't come up in the past on these others is we, we paid cash. <coughs> That makes a world of difference. You don't have to deal with the banks and that. And we also still have that opportunity to fall back and to fund that ourselves if something happens with the bank. 
so appreciate what you're doing, and uh, Thank you. Gene's been working on it, and I think it's going to be so. I mean, you said something that's a little different, though, Gene. Was there an issue with the state? I didn't think there was. No, we should have an MOU before you guys, the first meeting in February. Is it's there a state section? AG, AG's office right now. There is a state section in there? Not a state section. It's a uh, uh, dot, dot plant dot. site lease All right. on the BLM section. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Go ahead, Commissioner. With this change, do we need to involve again the first bank or somebody else to again for another opportunity? <coughs> It's not enough of a change that, uh, that's a good question huh? mr chairman that was exactly the situation that i brought to steve at that point in time as i said you know we, we would want to look at this we may need to open this back up to each of the banks what they suggested is let's let's go back to u.s bank see what they're willing to do and the conversations that i had with them when it came back with three three basis points in difference of what it was previously I told them I didn't feel like that was significant. Our other bid was 2.32%, I believe, off the top of my head. So Still so significantly more. less than what that was. Less, yeah. So I didn't think three basis points was going to really affect things at that point in time. So I didn't believe that we needed to bring it back out to a, another RFP at that point in time. That was my decision. I, if, if I overstep my bounds, we can always go back and redo that. But I didn't think that that was enough to change to, to worry about it. Jimmy. Then he did discuss that with me, and I, I okay. agreed with him at that point in time. I don't see that that's significant based on the fact we were still low. Yeah. Okay, very good. Okay with that? All right. Any other questions for Thank us? Thank you. No? Any other concerns? Citizens' concerns? Any others? Yes. Is Are these concerns just for this topic, or is it for other things? You mean this open session? Well... Uh, co com co citizens' comments? Yes. Yeah, this is for anything. Okay. Again, my name is Kate Neal, former employee of Southwest Counseling Service. Um, the insurance was increased 20%, passed on to the employees. I think that that was a horribly big jump that we didn't know about as a company, but we didn't have time to budget for or anything else. I think we should consider some kind, I don't know the right words, an amendment. I just think that people should, should be able, if you knew we were going up 20% in insurance, it would have been a nice for us to figure out some way to deal with it besides passing it on to our employees who need money, we need money to hire our employees, to keep them going, we need insurance, you give them a 1-2% raise, you, you increase their insurance on top of what they're paying, 20%. I think that should be considered and maybe we can do something about that. Thank you. Um, I just will, one comment I would make on that is I believe our HR department has been and was in contact with uh, the different entities. I don't can't tell you exactly how soon. Uh, we were notified probably around after the budget year came in or right near to plan for a possible 20% due to prescription possible. costs. Yeah, and uh, that's what it turned out and other entities were notified. Um, that's the best I can tell you um, from out of our HR department. I'm not saying we weren't notified. I'm just saying that it, it in a timely matter with your budgets, I mean, it's a huge oh. thing. You can't, I can't even imagine how you do it. I'm just saying that if, if we would have known possibly, yes, possibly 20%, but you usually think five, maybe, I mean, you're passing it on to the, the employees of the county, and insurance is such a big thing right now that I think we really need to be careful about our employees paying so much that they're not I'm not saying poverty but I mean to keep insurance for your family if you're a single mother or a single father or anything it's just a big increase thank you thank you for for that we appreciate it yes um, well I agree with you completely I, I understand that just want to clarify that the, the entire cost was not passed on to the employees the, no. the, the the cost of the county was also 20 percent. Right, I agree with as well. So the premium, the entire premium cost went up. So did the the premiums of the employees. So yes, uh, understand that. A lot of employees. Mm -hmm. sure. Thank you. Uh, Go ahead. So, um, as previous work in the nonprofit, we always built in 20 percent just as a safeguard. Um, but I would turn that back to Southwest Counseling or any of these agencies that are struggling. Um, if you feel that it's something that you need to come talk to us about per your your budget per your you know how you're 
your business is functioning, please come share that with us. Because we, you know, we don't want our employees um, or any of our agency employees that can, um, the agencies that we, you know, represent, we don't want those to, to be struggling to make we ends meet. Everybody is so struggling. come come forward, you know, as a proposal, um, as you know, something that could actually you know, solve the problem and you know and address it with us, and we can we can work through those issues because we have been approached by other entities, and we have we are working through those issues. So. And I just want you to know that I am I am speaking as a citizen. I am not speaking for a board right. member of Southwest Council. I'm just I'm, that, that's what I'm saying that it, as a citizen. Thank you. And I just wanted the folks to know, you know, if there's other agencies listening that are struggling with the same thing, that we we are willing to listen and we are willing to address this issue. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other concerns? Hi. Right. Introduce yourself. <laughs> I'm Mary Manitas. I'm a resident of Sweetwater County. Over 40 years, my husband's born and raised here. We've um, paid taxes all these years. Our taxes go to, and I'm going to beat the dead horse, I'll take two minutes, because um, I want to give you my spin on it, is that we do pay taxes. Now, comments are made that some people in the community in Sweetwater County do not even understand or know what IDOCs are, okay? And I understand that, and that's fine. My taxes have also paid for fire services, fire suppression, and law enforcement. Well, you know what? I haven't used those services either. My children have been out of school for years. My taxes are still paying for all of these things. And I'm grateful to say that I haven't needed these other services, but that doesn't make them less important. So what happens is when you go out and the fire truck needs an update, do you then charge the next people that have a fire to put out? Do you charge them for the update? I feel like the people that are using IDOCs are being charged for updates. This is all part of the county, the budget. This is all our money. This is where it needs to be overseen as to if things need to be done, you've got budgets for it. We're getting a select group that use this service are getting hit with it. So with that, should people who use other county services be invoiced too? I'm just, I wanted to put another different twist on this. We are being double taxed. The people that are paying taxes and that are using the service. I totally disagree with this. I respectfully request that you guys do, as a commission and as representatives of our county, look into this and then realize that you can't overturn what has been done. I understand people have talked to Ms. Lane directly. I have not. I'm just talking as a citizen, looking at it just very basically, factually. I paid once for this. Now you're telling me, after 10 years of using it for free, that all of a sudden I've got to pay again. Where does the line get drawn in the sand with all improvements that people are going to be charged again for things that we are have been paid for already? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Mary, good job. Okay, one more time. Any other citizens' concerns? Any other citizens' concern? I'll do. I'll pause. <laughs> <laughs> the session's closed now. Normally we would take a break, commissioners, but we do have. A, phone call on uh, tab uh, uh, that'll find it again tab F with his request for approval to appoint a circuit court magistrate that's a phone conference so I would like uh, Sally could we get phoned in to judge Prokost I want to, and while she's doing that I want to tell everybody thank you for being here we appreciate it we do our best to represent you and we will continue to do so and this matter will not just you brushed away? Thank you. It will not be. You have our commitment to that. Thank you. Thank you for that. Hello. Good morning, Judge. Why, hello. This is Chairman Wendley. Good morning. And uh, uh, with us we have Chairman Shanefield, Chairman Johnson. Uh, Chairman Smith and Chairman uh, Lloyd and uh, oh, no. oh, a lot of chairmen. Yeah, yeah we're all the chairmen. Uh, thank you. Uh, but anyhow, commissioners as well. Uh, but anyhow, uh, go ahead. The floor is yours with regard to a request for approval to appoint a circuit court magistrate. We do have uh, a letter um, in our packet, and I'll turn the floor over to you. Why, thank you, Chairman Wendling, Commissioners. Um, appreciate the opportunity to be allowed to appear by phone. It, it does help with the schedule, and uh, my driving is somewhat limited presently, uh, probably for the safety of all our citizens. Um, 
but you, the, the letter is fairly self-explanatory. Um, when we appoint magistrates here in the circuit court, we're required to come to the commission and have the commission approve that. Um, we simply are complying with statute. Uh, this doesn't cost the county anything. If magistrates are in fact paid, it comes out of the state's budget. Um, the district court has something similar. They're called district court commissioners, but they don't have to come to you folks to get that person approved. Um, we use magistrates, for example, um, if you know a judge uh, wakes up one morning and is too ill to come to court, a magistrate comes in and does just some of the basics to keep things moving for us. This is a pretty common process all across the state. Um, and we have made the request for Ed Newell to be approved. He is Judge Robinson's uh, staff attorney upstairs. And he also acts as a commissioner for her. Uh, if he is approved, it does have a benefit for us in that because he would probably be coming to assist us um, and he's already on the state payroll, if you will, we don't have to pay him separately. So it's kind of a win-win for everyone. Great. Any questions? Any questions, commissioners? I like win-wins. Huh? I like win-win. Yeah, everyone likes win-win, Judge. So uh, <laughs> there's no questions. Uh, commissioners, what's your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the request to appoint a circuit court magistrate. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Smith to approve a uh, circuit court magistrate. Is there a second? Second. Second, second by Commissioner Shanefield. Uh, any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Congratulations, Judge. Thank you all very much for your support on this, and uh, we'll get a copy of that res resolution and move forward. Thanks Thank for the you, time, folks. Thank you for Thank your time. Thank you, Judge. With that, in, with that in mind, we'll go back to our agenda and we will recess. What do you want, 10 minutes, Commissioners? And we will recess here, let's just say at 10.30, and we'll start off with uh, tab E, which is a discussion regarding the incident communication response. So with that, great.
have the meeting back to order after the break, and uh, we'll go back to our agenda, and at this time we'll go to, uh, went the wrong way on my agenda. We will go to tab E, which is discussion regarding the uh, Sweetwater County Incident Communication and Response Plan, and Miss Lane, I believe you're presenting that. year and with the uh, elections being under the critical incident of the Homeland Security, each county has to have a critical incident plan in place. Um, it kind of came out late December and um, there was confusion on whether it had to go through the county commissioners or not. Um, so I did, they did extend the deadline for me till January 31st and a few others because I didn't go through a meeting. Um, found it. it doesn't it doesn't necessarily need to but I wanted to keep you in the loop of what's going on with it so I did sign the packet um, we can't make changes we just had to have one in place so today's just an informational meeting on that um, if you um, notice with it um, we don't have a logo in there yet we don't know what logo we want to use for it I did go through the packet and change it to say Sweetwater County instead of put your county here when I first got it um, so I, I would like you, your involvement and to look over it and see if there's anything you think would be different if there was a critical incident, say the Russians hack our computers, that's what they're looking at, they're looking for the countries that may try to influence the election by um, attacking our election process. So if you look through it, if you see any changes, <coughs> let me know we can add those in there and then I can send it to the Secretary of State's office where it is on file it is currently on file um, my signature saying that we have one in place so that is in Ms. Lane yes. um, <coughs> Clerk Lane you say there as we review it there's opportunity to change mm -hmm. it so it's just for the kind of in a living um, document yes. which can be changed it as it we can go change as we go. We just need to then file, you know, let the Secretary of State's office know that we have a different one on file. Um, and then I'll probably have to sign a new one, which is fine. I just okay. needed to get that done and in to show that Sweetwater County has something in place for the, this upcoming election. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. kind of in, in there, they give you an overview of something happens, here's a letter you can put out, or here's a press release you can put out. And we do have access to that. Um, PR um, during the elections through the Secretary of State's office as well. And they kind of give you some, like, if the power all goes out in the city and you can't, you know, run anything and it doesn't come back up, what do you do for things like that? So it just gives you all kinds of ideas. But yes, if you, it's a living document. If we want to change it, we can. we got to find the county logo to put on there and make it. Which one? I, you know, I'm not sure which one to put on right now since we have several. Yeah. But that's it. It's informational so you know where we're at with critical incidents and homeland security information. Okay. Commissioner's questions. Go ahead. Commissioner Johnson, where did the document come from originally? Secretary of State's office. Okay. State did it. Yep. It's the yeah. same for every county. It's the same for every county. And you just go that's why but there's an opportunity to make it for your <coughs> county, our yeah. county. So if there's something in there that does that doesn't work, um, I think some of the smaller counties may have. Um, more issues where they don't have very access to things. Um, we have a backup generator here, um, things like that. So, um, but yes, came from the Secretary of State, and but we have the office ours. It's just an outline. So, and, and it only requires your approval. Yes. Other commissioner comments. So what's the next steps? Did you say one more time? Um, there really are no ne unless you have <coughs> changes. changes. There, there's no next step except I need to put a logo on the front page. Um, I did not have to send the paperwork back to the Secretary of State. Just my signature on the signature page. That as the head election <coughs> officer, that we have the protocol incidents plan in place. Any formal action need to be taken on? No. Very good. Thank you, commissioners. All right, I would thank you. All right, Appreciate thank you. you sharing it. Yeah, very good.
Appreciate it. Appreciate the work you did on that. Thank you. Okay, we'll go right on to tab G, which is approval of the 2020 uh, congestion mitigation air quality sub-recipient grant agreement. Mr. Lukerski is here. And because Ms. Marshall is ill, um, let's kind of see how much money you can bring into the county instead of spending it. Again, Christina brought it in. I'll just spend it on the back end. So I'd like to apologize to Christina who's watching this from home. I'll try to do the best job I can, but uh, she gave me some good instructions. So, Very good. Um, what this is, is that uh, Sweetwater County was awarded $310,803 in federal CMAC grant funding from the Wyoming Department of Transportation. The grant awards are required to match at 20% and expire December 31st, 2022. The purpose of the CMAC funding is to alleviate air quality issues created by energy development and other industrial activities within the vicinity. And what we applied for is to MAC chloride 103.5 miles of Sweetwater County Road. That is not all that we do in the county. That's just all based on uh, funding available that we could receive. Uh, we'll put a bigger project together in conjunction with this and do all the roads that we typically do. Um, the, cast, the required cast match for this project was included uh, in the grants project budget and now will require a budget amendment. So what we're asking for is a move to approve and authorize the chairman to sign the fiscal year 2020 congestion mitigation air quality sub-recipient grant agreement. Okay, very good. Uh, Questions from the commission for Mr. Lugerski? <coughs> no questions uh, here. We do this every year, of course. Yep. And uh, money this year, more or less than last year? A little bit less. A little bit less. Um, not, unfortunately, another another couple counties decided to jump on board, so it's a little different. Like that, so. Okay. Very good. All right. Commissioners, what's your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I move uh, we approve and authorize the chairman to sign the fiscal year 2020 congestion mitigation and air quality subrecipient grant agreement as presented. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? <laughs> second. Second. Uh, second by Commissioner Johnson. Uh, any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. And we'll move on to the next one is approval of this. Discussion of a new storage building for the Sweetwater County Weed and Pest District in Farson. Again, Mr. Bergersi, uh, do you, who do you have with you? I'll let him introduce himself. Very good. Would you introduce yourself, sir? <laughs> Hello, Chairman. Uh, I am Ryan Madsen, Supervisor for Sweetwater County Weed and Pest. Pleasure to be with you and the Board of County Commissioners. Been working with Gene Bergersi on a uh, project for Sweetwater County Weed and Pest, uh, trying to put up a little uh, leash line. Um, discussion, so I'll let him visit about that. <coughs> is is it going to it down? No. It's going to bring up a. Do you have it? Yeah. Do you want to put it on there? Hang on. Man. I got to push the right button so you get that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He's dangerous. <laughs> That'll make it a little bit easier to discuss what we're talking about. So, um, on the site plan, if you guys look, let me see if I can move this. That line right there and this line right here are described in a lease from 1975. It's a lease line. And basically the lease doesn't require any money from the weed and pest. Um, it just describes an acreage. And it says that they have quiet enjoyment. It goes back and forth what everybody's responsibilities are. Um, as you can see, their new proposed shop building is actually over the lease line. Um, and in talking to Dan, uh, talking to Chuck Radosevich, I reached out to him. Nobody can exactly figure out why that lease line was there. Um, it was back before Sweetwater County owned it, but it was back before when this shop was actually the ambulance and fire up there. Um, so we don't know exactly why, why that lease line was there. What we would like to do with your guys' permission is to uh, amend that lease line and not even have it, and then have an MOU between Sweetwater County uh, Weed and Pest and the Sweetwater uh, Board of County Commissioners that allows them to use the land with your guys' permission like we are now. Um, any buildings, any infrastructure, anything like that to come before you guys and see if you guys are okay with that. The lease line, as far as I can tell, doesn't mean anything. Um, it's just a line that was drawn on a map, uh, maybe to make sure that everybody was controlled in a certain area. Um, the new building, as proposed, will not affect any of our operations, which are down right here. Our existing um, lease building, everything is in this vicinity. Um, so it will not affect anything that we currently do. Very good. And, and we would like to put that building there for the oh, purpose right. of equipment storage. Um, 
in chemical storage. So it's not a, uh, it's not non going to, uh, what's that? Non-man. Yes, non-man <laughs> building. Um, I've included a picture in your packet of what that's going to look like. Um, the funding for it will come out of our uh, rent uh, regular budget process. There won't be any additional cost or, or funding. Um, it's something that we're going to take care of within the money that we already have. So. All right, so if I recall correctly, do you have to do an amendment to the original agreement for these lines first? We're going to work through the MOU process the MOU. and see if we can do that and get all of that before they can officially build the building. Okay. But they would like to know how the process is going to work so they can get on with planning it and you know advertising for contractors and getting the building secured. Go ahead, Commissioner. Okay. What I'd suggest is we just uh, authorize the abandonment of that uh, that money. Okay. Uh, authorize the gene to go forward with the whatever is required. Well, yeah, yeah. Or whatever. And uh, that would be okay. So you know, dealing with just the line, not this agenda item, because this agenda item is to approve the plan for the building. Am I correct? So we we'll get right. two, two, two things right now. So first off, I would entertain a motion as said by Mr. Johnson to address that line. Why don't we address the lease <coughs> because it actually is two lines. It's one on the west and one on the east side of the property. So how would you like that motion? Um, Oh, where's Christina when you need her? Huh, <laughs> She's watching over your shoulder. What was that? She's watching over your shoulder. I know she is. <laughs> um, and this this lease does actually not have a lease no more or anything. But just say the uh, the lease the lease lines as it pertains to the lease section of the uh, meter test district. Something like that. You can make me sound a lot smarter, Mr. Smith. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> I'm no engineer. All right, so if I can read you correctly, uh, motion to address the lease line. The lease lines within the Sweetwater County property as it pertains to Sweetwater County Road and Pest. Weed Pest. Weed Pest. Sorry, Weed Pest. All right, did you get that motion, Sally? Yes, All right, is there a second? Second. That was made by that motion was made by Commissioner Smith, right? Yes. And seconded by Commissioner Johnson. Correct. Very good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Both same sign. So let's get that addressed. Now let's go back to your original uh, agenda item with regard to uh, approving the concept plan for the new storage building. Yes, I fully support this. Um, you know, I do, I don't know all of Dan Madsen's um, process when he does up there, so and I can't speak to that, but. They've been very cooperative with us, uh, helping us do a, a lot of good work out on the roads and stuff like that. If this will not affect our um, occupancy of our building or anything that we currently do up there, so I leave it up to you guys to approve it or not. Okay. Uh, commissioners, questions on the concept plan? Commissioner Smith. Are we going to be sad any number of years down the road that uh, they have this space and we want it for something else? Or, no. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, and then with that, uh, commissioners, I'd entertain a motion to approve the concept plan for the new storage building for the Weed and Pest District to be located on Sweetwater County property in Farson, Wyoming. So, so moved. So moved by Commissioner Johnson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Smith. Discussion? <coughs> None. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. It's like got a question with me before. Go ahead, as chairman. <laughs> what, what are you doing about Raymond's these days? Uh, as of right now, um, through our county weed and pests agreement or our, our uh, declaration for that as a pest expired, the weed and pest council had that as a declared pest for five years. Um, that uh, expired this past year in 2019. And, uh, we have turned that over to uh, um, the creditor board as well as to um, USD uh, Wildlife Service, USDA Wildlife Services, um, and they've agreed to run that within their uh, funding scope. Uh, for that five years, uh, our projected plan was to establish a program and fund the uh, creation of that program so that they could then see how it worked where it worked and if it was effective 
um, and then it was agreed to turn that back over to them. And so it, it seemed a better fit, Commissioner Johnson, just because within the region past, all we were was a money funneling agency. We had no legal uh, opportunities or rights to control the Raven, so it really took everything out of our hands, and all we could, were doing was funneling money. Um, so that's where we are right now, and they currently have one. So it's not a dead issue as, as far as you know? No, as far as I know, it's not a dead issue. One of the things that I was dawned on me is that the issue of the ravens, if we would attack the crows, you know, it's hard for the to difference, and I think we should attack the crows. And if a few ravens get attacked, that's their problem. <laughs> that's a great approach, because the crows are not uh, protected. <laughs> And when we get up and we inspect the beaks and the wings, if it's a raven. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, that's all you do. Yeah, so, it's increment damage. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. Any other damage? Right? Is that on record? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's Anything? Good. Good. Any other? <laughs> Got to take care of the stage grouse. Any other questions? Anybody else? All right. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you being here. Have a good one. Yeah. Appreciate, yeah. It. Appreciate your work you do. Okay, the next item on the agenda is an easement with Rock Springs Grazing Association for a portion of County Road 21, Bar X Road. Mr. Ligurski, you're on the floor. Um, what this is is a, an easement, uh, like Charman said, for a portion of County Road 21, uh, the Bar X Road. Um, this was actually uh, money that we received through the Gateway West project uh, to reconstruct this road and actually widen it. Uh, when we were in the design phase, we realized that we did not have an easement for Rockstone grazing on that portion of the land, so we couldn't do anything. Um, after a lot of work between uh, Mr. De Leon and the Rockstone Grazing Association, we finally have a lease in front of us um, for a whole entire 100 foot wide easement, which we need in that area um, for wind and everything like that to be able to construct it correctly. Very good. Uh, questions, Commissioners? No questions. I will look at this and I'll entertain a motion to approve the easement with Rock Springs Grazing Association for a portion of County Road 21, Bar X Road, and allow the chairman to sign all necessary documents. Is that correct, Mr. Wilson? Yes, sir. Got a motion? Yes, sir. One, motion by whom? By Roy? Roy, I think. Okay, a second? By, okay, by Mr. Shanefield. Discussion. No discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, next next up is the DEQ permit authorization for reconstruction of the tertiary water line that feeds Crossroads <coughs> Park. Mr. Lugurski. Um What this is is um, why not a couple years ago, as you guys know, Interstate Road, uh, the bridge that's been dead over the interstate for four, five, six years, I don't know. Um, there you have been working on a project with the city of Rock Springs uh, to completely redo that bridge, uh, full-fledged intersections, everything like that, and actually take it through the wastewater treatment plant area um, almost over to Blair County Road. Um, it's a big project. It's going to be in April this year. Um, as part of that, I came before this board because we had to uh, redo some of the, the tertiary water line that actually feeds the irrigation system up there, um, case it, um, realign it, do something like that because of this uh, project. With this is a DEQ application um, that has to go before DEQ up at Lander so that they can approve the water line um, and the water line plans. So that needs to be just a side by um, a member of the board. Commissioners, questions? Any issues uh, with it as far as you know? No, there's not. The, the only issue, we, we just don't know the construction cost of it until it bids in April, um, what it will be, um, and that's unfortunate. We know about what it is, but we were able to take care of some a couple of drainage problems and stuff like that in the low-lying areas and, and re, re-slope the line so it drains better. Do you know what the total uh, appropriation is for the modification of the overpass? Any chance? Off the top of my head, I want to say it's $36 million, but I could be wrong. It's, it's, it's in the mid, mid, mid to upper 36 But the funds are available. Funds are available. That's all I have done. Yeah, third, matter of fact, Thursday we will be doing the final plan review with everybody that's affected by that. Okay, very good. Any other questions, commissioners? With that, no questions. I'll entertain motions to approve the DEQ permit authorization for reconstruction of the tertiary water line that feeds Crossroad Park and allow the chairman to sign all necessary documents. So moved. So moved by Commissioner Johnson. Second. 
Second. Second by Commissioner Smith. Discussion. No discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Same sign. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next up, again, is a discussion on reducing the retainage from 10% to 2.5% for the Salt Wells Bitter Creek Crossing Project. Mr. Dugerski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as you guys know, the Bitter Creek Crossing Project was completed um, December 13, 2020. It was put into substantial completion. The only thing that was not done as far as that project was the seating. Um, we just couldn't do it. I mean, it was ground was too frozen, which is obvious in the center. Um, so when Rob DiBernardi and I were talking, he said, you know, I have a lot of bills to pay. Um, is there any way we can reduce the retainage on that? And I said, I don't know. I have to bring it before the board. Um, and basically what it is is they have about $5,800 worth of work that needs to get done in the spring. Um, and reducing it to 2.5% still leaves $12,000 just in case that they don't do anything. I have received the lien release waivers from all of their major suppliers along with Deep and Artie, but they paid all their bills um, up until the release of the retainage uh, portion of it so that we're covered by that. When we release this, we still have to go through the advertising period of 41 days at the 2.5% period, um, but right now I feel fairly confident that they paid all their bills with their major suppliers and there isn't anything hanging out there. Commissioners, questions? None whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Okay, with no questions, uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve approval of reducing the retainage on the Salt Wells Bitter Creek Crossing project from 10% to 2.5% and allowing the public works directors to pay the difference in the released retainage to the prime contractor, De Bernardi Construction Company Corporate. So moved. So moved by Commissioner Smith. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Shanefield. All in favor, <coughs> signify by saying aye. Aye. I apologize, I forgot the discussion part. Okay. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank okay. you, Mr. Thank, Thank you for your time, sir. Okay, next up we have a request to replace a vacant position. No, you've got the UN one. I'm sorry. I, yeah, you're right. Request to approval of the UMR plan document, stop loss gap letter for calendar year 2020. Mr. McLean. Doc, we're flexible. We'll take them in any way. Yeah, are. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, Mr. Chairman, County Commissioners, um, as you probably know by now, each year after approval of the uh, kind of agreement of the health insurance plan, uh, certain contract documents trickle in <coughs> over the course of the year. These are a couple of those um, that need to be signed uh, by the county, uh, the chairman of the county commission. Um, the first one um, is the uh, <coughs> first one is uh, the acceptance letter. These are just uh, changes, mostly due to regulatory compliance. Um, there's a summary of modifications with UMR regarding our summary plan document. For everybody's edification, the summary plan document is the document that governs how UMR will pay claims under our health insurance plan. And uh, this letter uh, accepts uh, those changes and authorizes the, the board chairman to sign with the commission. So, okay. Questions? Commissioners? If there be no questions, uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the UMR plan document stop loss gap letter for the calendar year 2020 and authorize the chairman to sign. So moved. So, moved. so moved by Commissioner Johnson. Is there a second? Second. Second from Commissioner Lloyd. Discussion? None. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Now we're up to the replacement of the vacant position in information uh, technology. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. There's there's two um, two uh, agreements in there. The one I mentioned is the acceptance page of the modifications to the stop loss. Okay. And the second page is the as you refer to in your motion the uh, uh, stop loss uh, contract types of twelve fifteen. I was just taking them one at a time. Okay. So go ahead and do the second one. Okay. Uh, the the second. Um, uh, agreement basically is just notifying that we intend to have a contract type of 1215. Obviously, the stop loss uh, year is is uh, fiscal year, uh, calendar year, but obviously it takes a while for claims to trickle in. 
uh, before they can be paid. So we're just notifying with this as we continue to have a 1215 contract and that will stop loss <coughs> and authorization for the chairman to sign that agreement also. Okay. Commissioner, it's your pleasure. So move again. So moved by Commissioner Johnson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Loy. Discussion? <coughs> All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Gary. For that piece. All right, now we go to your request for replacement <coughs> vacant position in technology. And I have you up. Is Mr. Knight here today? He has been. Okay. Been detained, but I think. Let's go ahead and you can. Yeah. You can have it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, County Commissioners, as you recall at the last meeting, I notified the board about a vacancy in our uh, IT uh, group. Um, and the um, board had authorized me to go ahead and, and get going with the recruitment, but I'm here today to formally uh, request permission to staff that position. The cost uh, information is contained uh, in the documents in the board packet. Um, I would also note that since the last meeting, um, we have had a no response, and so we have five or six people that have responded to the potential applicants for that position already, which is positive. So, nice. okay, questions, commissioners? No questions. What's your pleasure, Mr. Mr. Chairman? I move that uh, we approve the request to replace a vacant position in the information technology department as presented. Okay, we've got a motion. Is there a second? Second. We've got a second by Commissioner Johnson. Discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. All righty. Next up will be our sheriff. <coughs> sheriff Grossnickel, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I believe you're here with regard to the contract between Student Water Council. Southwest Counseling and Sweetwater County Sheriff's. Correct. This is for anger management and nursing classes uh, for the JPX program. You know, it's, it's taken a while to get this contract with you know, different entities that are involved in you know, it. Uh, we'd like to pay for I'm sure they would like us to pay for the services. We can get right back to our attention to it. Okay. Uh, it has been looked at by the county. Yeah, I'm just okay. also. That would be a question I had, but it's been answered. Uh, questions, commissioners? Mr. Johnson? Yeah, just on the signature page, it's got to be changed so, somehow. So. Yeah. It's already got two signatures on it, so I, I suggest you just cross my name out, put your name in. Okay. We'll make that edit along with that. So, any other questions? Commissioners, your pleasure. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Shainfield. I would like to make a motion um, that we approve the contract between Southwest Counseling and Sweetwater County Sheriff's Office um, to continue to perform these services and pay for them and authorize the chairman. Okay, we've got a motion is by Commissioner Shainfield. Second? Second. Second by Commissioner Smith. Discussion? <laughs> I was watching the lips. I'm sorry, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> discussion? I'll just be louder. Okay. <laughs> Very good. No, no discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Well, I, I did think of one question. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> um, will this need to be funded annually then? Is this contract just for this year? This is just for this year. Yeah, and it, so we'll have to budget for it. Fund it then. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll look that forward all? to that. Yeah. Well. Okay, thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. Let your staff know we appreciate what they do. I will. And we appreciate what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on with our agenda. I believe up next is a 2019 annual report and update from our Sweetwater County Conservation District. And Ms. Toman and staff are available, please. Come on up and introduce yourselves. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I'm Mary Tolman, <laughs> Chairman of the Sweetwater County Conservation District. With me, I have Karen Pacini, our District Clerk, Tom Burris, our uh, Vice Chairman. And we have uh, been building a, a group of Associate Supervisors, Randy Dewar and Randy Shipman, are with us today. We appreciate their support. Thank you. Randy, Randy was also a past member of the board. <coughs> 
Oh, excuse me, may I get my glasses because I want to read something to you. <laughs> thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Randy, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Thanks Josh, uh, Josh Corsi is also on our board. Uh, he has a radio talk show about the uh, Little Mountain program that happened at the Broadway at 6 to 9. You want me to announce that. Uh, Stephanie Anderson from McKinnon is on our board, and uh, Jean Dickinson is on our board. I just want to, I'm not going to go through the whole report, but it's really important that you understand our mission and our legal statute. It's to provide for the conservation of the soil and soil and water resources of this county and for the control and prevention of soil erosion and for, uh, for flood prevention or the conservation, development, utilization, and disposal of water and thereby to stabilize ranching and farming operations, to preserve natural resources, protect the tax base, control floods, prevent impairment of dams and reservoirs, preserve wildlife, protect public lands, and protect and promote the health, safety, and general welfare of the people of this county. Statute 1116-103, we adopted that also as our mission. So that might help. Uh, our major accomplishments, we finished the Bear Creek project and uh, that head cut structure, drop structure. And we had two major watershed studies financed by the Water Development Commission to do a comprehensive analysis of our watersheds on the Bitter Creek and the east side of Flaming Gorge area. And we uh, joined a partnership with uh, Suffolk County to do a watershed study on the on the, uh, Big Sandy and Little Sandy. So we will have, we do have projects that we, we submit five projects to the small water development projects for the Big Sandy area. <coughs> so we just completed uh, one, one for Ramsey and working on another one on Green River uh, the, over by the going well, the town that that project that we're helping so with the small water project funds to finish that project. So we also spend a lot of our time with the public uh, process. Uh, all the BLM meetings with Commissioner uh, Johnson, we are in all of those meetings. We formed a coalition of local governments that's been in operation for 20 years now, I believe, almost 15, 20 years. We meet once a month and we have a, a membership of uh, five conservation districts and four county commissions. Uh, so we comment, have a legal team, a technical team, we comment on every environmental assessment EIS that happens in this part of, part of the state. So that takes up a lot of our time. And while I'm talking about that, we have some really important public service commission hearings. There will be one in Rock Springs on January 29th from 11 to 2 at the uh, Rock Springs City Council Chambers. Uh, so we're going to help get the word out on that, and that's the part that I wanted to read, read you. Kimber is also having one in Lincoln County on the 28th from 4 to 7 p.m. at their Civic Center. If you can't make one, maybe you can go to the other. And they've got busloads of people scheduled to come in. This is huge. They're affecting our tax base, local economies, jobs, all of that. Oh, shit. It's here. Hold on. This is from our legal staff, our county books in Denver. She did a summary for us. In November 2019, the Wyoming Public Service Commission opened an investigation into the Rocky Mountain Power Integrated Resource Plan, IRP. You can hear that word that proposes accelerated closures for coal-fired power and captive mines in Wyoming. On December 23rd of 2019, the commission consolidated this investigation with the earlier investigation of the coal study that was said to be the basis for the selected coal-fired plant closures. On January 6, 2020, the commission staff <coughs> held a scheduling conference and set the hearing date for July 13th through July 17th. The co uh, our coalition of local governments, we intervened on that on December 23rd. The public comment periods have been announced and will proceed as announced. It would be very helpful for each community to see that the affected residents attend. While the coalition will be developing detailed reasons that the proposed closures are not the least cost, least risk options. The commission will benefit from the perspectives of the residents of the communities who will be most immediately affected. 
Well, Governor Gordon weighed in on December 19th to issue a request for a proposal to conduct an intensive analysis of the data and models. Um, the Commission action, the, the Public Service Commission action to review the integrated resource plan is said to be unprecedented in Wyoming. Similar reviews are occurring in Oregon and hearings are held in Utah and Idaho. Our coalition has asked the Commission to investigate the coal study last winter and the Commission announced its investigation in late June of 2019. It is encouraging that we are now at a contested case posture to dig into the actual numbers and impacts rather than endless Rocky Mountain Power points that reflect conclusions rather than the data used in the models. This is huge for Sweetwater County. And they've already shut down uh, two of the, that's correct, is it one, two at Mountain Plant and Kimmer. They shut down two of the coal fire. And they're proposing to do the same at Jim Bridger. One, one next year, right? Next year. Yes. And uh, <coughs> it's all being driven by, by the West Coast states that, that want the green power and they want the separate lines. And uh, we're going to pay the price. We're going to have power outages that the alternate power sources are not going to fill the gap and it's going to hurt our economy so I just ask all of you to help spread the word and be sure you attend one of those hearings on the 28th or the 29th. That's the biggest message I can leave with you today. Uh, a couple of other things. The solar before you, before you leave that, go ahead. Yeah, yeah Mary, uh, <coughs> what she's saying is absolutely true and we've been very active. The coalition's been very active. It's one of the issues I went to Washington on. We need to understand that in Sweetwater County alone, we're talking over 1,100 jobs yep. that working on power has their way eventually. I think we need to protest that. We are protesting that. 29th is an important meeting. I feel uh, uh, quite uh, disappointed in Sweetwater County's position, not our position, but the uh, Lincoln County. I think they said they're going to have 800 people at that hearing in Lincoln County. I don't know how many have on the 29th here, but we need to have our people there. I think the, 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 I would hope that the union at Bridger would be there, uh, Bridger Coal Company, and, uh, and all those black people would be there, because you need to understand how, how extremely important this is to our county. Rocky Mountain Power is wrong, in my opinion, as to the way they're approaching that. They're going to decommission two of those lines, two of those, uh, at Bridger. And, and, and what will happen, they'll be cannibalized over the period of time. I don't believe that is the right posture that they should take. They should at least put those on the market to see if there's a willing buyer for them. That will not happen, but we need to push that. The other alternative needs to be looked at. If they don't want to put, if they don't want them to be coal-fired, they could be gas-fired. That helps us in a different area. It takes away from the coal, but it'll help in another area. But I think the public needs to understand the, the tremendous impact down the road that this is going to have on Sweetwater County, and we need to be vocal about it. We are uh, uh, <coughs> taking this message to our Washington delegation. Uh, we've written an extensive report, uh, Mr. Cott and I. That report went to our, our Washington delegation. Uh, the only one that I've seen any action on that came out is the governor finally said something. I think the governor is trying to do finally what he should have been doing quite a while ago, in my opinion. But yeah, I cannot underestimate, or overestimate, I should say, the impact that this could have on Sweetwater County. Yeah, I know Mark Cotton has been helping County kind Books of with, uh, with right. the facts from this county. It, this, what is going to mean to this That's county. in the letter that we gave to County. She's the got that letter. Jobs and dollars and uh, it's huge. So, I mean, we really need to spread the word. And Karen and I are going to be working on press release today to get out to get that, get it advertised. That we need everyone that we could possibly get to that meeting. And they have had a weird time, 11 to 2. Why do you think that is? Yeah, right. <laughs> but we have ship workers. But they some of them are off. <laughs> but, they're, but basically it's, it's a hearing to take comment right. from right. constituents yes. and businesses. So yeah. I understand. So um, are you, Commissioner? I intend to be there. Yes. You're going to be there? Yes. Any other commissioner? Okay. All righty. Um, one of the comments they made that, that I think we need to hear loud and clear, and this was directly from a key person with, within Rocky Mountain Power, is we're just re we're just responding to the consumer's preference. Now you tell me if there's anybody in Sweetwater County that would take that position. That position, when they say consumer preference, is California, 
Washington and Oregon. That's not that's not us. It is not in the best interest of Sweetwater County nor the state of Wyoming. Well, it wouldn't be in their best interest either to cut the power off at the county state line, I say. We're being forced to follow the, the demands of another population. It's going to put huge costs on us. We're going to bear the burden exactly. of that. And they will too, ultimately. So that's huge. I just wanted you to know about that. The other issue is solar farms. So we've got the one solar farm, and we have a huge jam up with the deer on the highway in December. Thousands of deer jumped up behind that solar farm. It was antelope on Or antelope, excuse me. It was antelope, sorry. There's so a difference. Johnson. You know the difference between sheep. Well, and I thought it was sheep. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they all have four legs. You know how that I know. <laughs> so, Kevin Spence and uh, Gaiman Fish has been talking to me and he wants to meet with them uh, to see if they can mitigate that. But I don't know what they're thinking about. But the way that was designed, it came into a V. There was no other place for them to go. They said, oh, they can go around it. And we commented, all of us commented through the coalition, that we wanted a buffer, a, a trailing area left through there. Domestic sheep herds go along that highway, the real sheep, not just antelope sheep, and deer, <laughs> and everything goes through that corridor. And they didn't leave a corridor. They just expected all of the animals to know that they're supposed to go out around. And, um, and now they're proposing a second solar farm, and we're really, you know, the first time we tried to be objective, we thought, well, you know, it's good for the economy, and it's good for green power, and all this stuff. <coughs> But this next time we will be much more vocal. They, they, they're not willing to provide for alternate water sources. And the second one, if they put it on the uh, east side of that Highway uh, 372, it's going to really jam up that corridor between the river and Highway 372. It's already a, a narrow corridor. If they stick the majority of the second section on that side of the highway, it's going to make a bigger impact. And uh, so I just want you to be aware of that, to, to stay alert to it. But they need to mitigate what happens with them. You know, that existing solar farm needs to mitigate that somehow to make that passable around that. Uh, well, solar the fencing, farm. the fencing actually pushed them right onto the highway. Well, they made a V that just forced them right into a corner. So um, that was not good. No. The next thing I like a couple other things. The uh, WLCI Commissioner Johnson was on the executive board and chairman as was I. I still am on the Wyoming Landscape Conservation Initiative Executive Board. We meet in Cheyenne, Cheyenne on January 30th, so I may miss the, that hearing on the 29th. I don't, I don't know how, how the travel plans are going to work out. We do projects in 19 million acres of southwest Wyoming. And uh, <clears throat> we partner with BLM and all sorts of other agencies to get funded uh, to put projects on the ground for wildlife and, and uh, domestic. Uh, well. Mr. Chairman, Mary, what was the funding stand for WS WLC? They have promised to keep it at about two to three hundred thousand for the next three years. You know, I think they can do it. They've lost the Healthy Lands Initiative, which gave us priority for like a million, over a million dollars the first few years. So the funding is tight, but actually, as I've seen funding get tighter on a lot of these things, it makes people partner up better and share. And work together, and so we've done. We've continued to do major projects by watershed level for that uh, uh, up by Pineville we, uh, and Big Piney, the New Bear uh, Initiative. You know, to do the aspen treatments. Uh, we're working with Little Mountain to do treatments and, and things that are on a bigger scale. They get more partners. So we're getting funding from Game and Fish, from the Wildlife uh, Trust Fund, and uh, conservation districts, the BLM. So we're able to, to do some really great things. And we have a staff uh, that's supported by Game and Fish, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, um, uh, BLM, Conservation, uh, we don't fund it, but the Department of Ag becomes a full-time person that works work as a staff to help develop these projects and that thing. So it's been powerful. It's really, it's really exciting. The last thing is the sad news. This is the worst winter I can remember since I was a little kid that started so early. You know, we had bad winters before, but they didn't start until now, in February. This one's been going on two months, and as a livestock operator, I can tell you it's severe. You can't even get off the road, can't get off the hog road, even to feed. We're feeding all of our animals full time, which we're not used to doing that. We used to, you know, we used to forage on, on the desert. So we're into two years, or two months, it feels like two years, two months of intense feeding that we're already into, and there's, there doesn't seem to be any relief in sight. I see big bunches of antelope and deer, 
as well as the sheep and cows. Commissioner <laughs> Johnson. <laughs> I did the same. <laughs> that are desperate for feed. And, I mean, even on the feed ground, I, I got stuck yesterday. Just if you just break through that crust of ice, and there's nothing. It's just impossible to get around. And north of I-80 up towards Montreal, the snow is on the level. It's, it's a little so deep. So I just am telling you that there are going to be severe losses of wildlife. Yeah. And maybe some ranchers too. I said we probably have to sell one herd of sheep to pay for the feed for the, for the rest of them. So unless you have questions, uh, I don't know what the rest of our board can do. <coughs> I wanted to make one more comment about back on this power and the, that the consumer make a decision on how they're going to do that. If they can do that on 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 the type of power we're providing or if it's being provided, uh, the same people can control the water that comes out of one of them also. And that's scary. If they, if they, if the masses can control what kind of power we get, they can also control where the water where goes. our water goes. Yeah. We'll take and that. we get let that happen. Very good. Thank you, Tom. Question? Do you have anything? Well, I had a question. As far as... Excuse me for a minute. That's uh, Randy Shipman with, with uh, Conservation District also. Uh, I think Warren Buffett made it clear about coal in the nation and where he wants this nation to go. But when this meeting occurs, where does school districts one and two stand? Have they? I don't know. Well, they have the most to lose. We, the we all, my position on it is representing all of the people in Sweetwater County, yeah. and that's the position I took in Washington. But if you're not going to listen, if you're not going to listen to a county commissioner, who are you going to listen to? Oh, well, I agree fully, with Mr. Johnson. Uh, but when this hearing comes up, it's going to have 800 people or so up in Kemmer. It'd be nice to show a pretty good force here as well. That's the point. I think Kemmer has been way ahead of this, even in the state legislature. It's the Kemmer uh, Lincoln County legislators that have been most vocal, thank heaven, relative to this issue. Ours, I have not heard one word from ours. Yeah, well, I'm just curious. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anything else, Ms. Thoma? We thank you for your time. If you have questions, please feel free to contact us at your time. We always like to do an annual meeting with you uh, to let you know what we're about before we have our head that asking you for money. So we always <laughs> do appreciate that very much. Yeah, I'd just like to make one. I, I attend, over the last 14 years or however long I've been doing this, uh, Every meeting that I've been in, these people have been there, and they don't get paid for this. That's all volunteerism, especially Mary. Uh, you know, I don't know how many meetings you attend, Mary, but it's more than I do, and I uh, appreciate very much what you and the Conservation District does. You're, you're a voice out there. You have an impact. I, I think people tend to listen to you, and I appreciate that very much, and the people in Sweetwater County should appreciate what you do. Well, thank you, and I appreciate having such a group for the supervisors and staff. Karen is our one staff person and she does an outstanding job. It's really well beyond being yeah. in the place. So. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. But we're also bringing on uh, more supervisors, <coughs> associate supervisors, who are volunteers to help us in our <coughs> projects here. So we really, really appreciate their involvement. So thank you for the you. Just Just the only commissioners. Any other commissioner comments? Roy, anybody? Okay, just one more thing. For the next conservation district, is the workshop still planned to have the conversation and information presented from the little, I believe it's Little Snake River Conservation District regarding yes. uh, boundaries mm -hmm. that still intend to take place at? Yes, we're having a Thanks for reminding us. Okay. I Thank missed you. that. Uh, at 2 o'clock on February 6th, Thursday, our regular meeting day, we're having a work session at 2 o'clock with Kent Fillerman, the surveyor, surveyor who has worked with us through the county's funding, of course, to develop a massive database of this county. We know every road trail track in this county. We know every uh, migration corridor, Rockland boundary, anything you want to know about this uh, county, uh, sage grass, all of the information that we need to be able to comment effectively on those resource management plans is in that database. Ken Feldman will be there to present the database 
And then uh, we'll have a discussion on how best to store it or make it accessible without some of it is still pre decisional because of the Rock Springs Resource Management Fund, how to how to protect that confidentiality until it goes public. So we'll have discussion on that. And then Little Snake is a uh, conservation district has approached us about doing uh, a possible boundary change. And it doesn't require commission approval, but we want the commission to be fully involved and know what is being proposed. I don't, we haven't taken a position as a board. They're seeing that their mill levy has gone down, but we have all of Eastern Sweetwater County that has a potential huge mill levy base that they could take and expand their boundary into Sweetwater County. They probably could get a mill levy uh, approved. That would have to have commission approval to do a, a ballot to uh, get the vote of the people who would be in Eastern Sweetwater County. Little Snake is already doing a lot of work in Sweetwater County. We have an MOU with them. Uh, they have a fully prepared staff that has done a lot of water development projects and other kinds of projects because a lot of the producers that live in Little Snake or Carbon County operate in Eastern Seaboard. So that's, that's their rationale for wanting to uh, propose a boundary change. So thank you for Yeah, the and the commission is inviting the commission. I did invite the commission at the last meeting yeah. about I would have to come because it will give you a greater understanding of your county what's in your, what we do. It's power. Uh, just one comment, two comments, one on each of those that you bring. The first one, I, I think uh, some of that information is pre decision. Yeah, I understand so we won't go into that. But I, I do think eventually that database should be in the county. That should be, con be controlled and available to the county not the conservation district. We paid for that. We appreciate what the conservation, conservation district's done, but it should be housed in the county. Well, there's not a question about that. Okay. It's just, do you put it on the cloud or do you move it to the county? How, how do you do it most effectively so our legal team also can access it as a unit? So it's not a problem. We know, we know that the county funded that. Okay. And, and, and on the second, the issue I think is going to affect Sweetwater County because when, when you give up some of that base you're Rod and Peter to pay Paul, and Paul doesn't live in Sweetwater County. And, and we've got to be very careful about that. I don't think we need to debate it yet, but I just point out to you <coughs> that uh, I appreciate Little Snake. They do a great job, but I appreciate you people more, and I think that uh, th those resources should stay in Sweetwater County. We haven't taken a position. I know. Just I, talk, you and I have talked about it. I'm aware of that. But these, that these people aren't even aware of what's going on, and they need, right. to, they need to know what's going on. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Any other comments, other commissioners, before we move on? I can only echo the same comments Commissioner Johnson did, appreciating the work you've done and all the work you do. And you're there, you're there for us more than I think anybody realizes, and we appreciate everything you guys do and each and every one of you. So thank you. Well, appreciate it. We appreciate your liaison and your dedication well, to coming to the meetings and supporting us. So yeah. thank you for that. Just glad to be a part of it because you guys do a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good day. Okay, moving on. Tab P. Uh, Rock Springs Chamber of Commerce is here to talk about the consent, the Sense 2020 Census, and to request some funding. And with us is Mr. Lee. Uh, Rick Lee with the Rock Springs Chamber of Commerce. Thanks for, for your time. I won't take much of it. Um, the census 2020 is an important account. As you know, uh, the, the census data that we gather from this is, is just crucial. It's just very important. Probably now, after what we just heard, more crucial than ever. I don't know. Um, I've, I've been around for a long time, and, and uh, it just seems like this is just the time to make sure that we're getting everything that we need to get. Um, Census data, as you know, is used for redistrict redistricting. It's uh, used for public planning, public services, um, roads, schools, health care, new businesses, economic development. Um, all things that are really important to our county. Um, but most importantly, in my opinion, it's, it's what guides the allocation of funding. And, um, and so therefore, for that reason, the Chamber really wants to be involved and make sure that we're, we're getting an accurate account. We're getting everything that we deserve to get um, as far as, as funding and allocations for funding. Um, so we are asking for $800 from the county to help market educate the public on the importance of the census. Now, this is strictly for educating, strictly for marketing, it's just strictly for making sure that, that our populace knows how important this is. Um, Kayla Manico, 
who is from the YWCA and is a Rushman um, board of directors member, um, is, is heading the committee. She did a bang up job, she did a great job. Um, her and her committee have identified some, some avenues to market and encourage a return on your investment for the county. Um, some of those identifiers are some Western Wyoming College uh, students. That's, that's an area that, that goes undercounted. They don't understand how important they are. And it could be a big, big count for us. So educating those, those folks, letting them know. Also, uh, language barrier groups. We have several populist groups in, in our county that, that just don't get counted because they're not familiar with the language and they don't understand how important it is. So educating them. Um, the underemployed, et cetera. There, there, there's several identified groups that we need to make sure that they're, they're aware of how important they are and how important it is for us to count them. Um, what we hope to accomplish with this funding, and, and I understand things, things are, are strict right now, they're tight, um, but we see it as, as an investment. And the, the return for the county on this investment is to help us accomplish, accomplish a, a, an accurate count. Um, what we want to do is inform the public how important it is to, to be counted in the census. Um, we're, we're asking for the money. We, we, we're going to continue doing what we need to do. We just, we just would uh, appreciate some help from the county to make sure that we're getting it done right. Um, and the marketing is, is, seems to be the direction to go. So we, uh, we appreciate your consideration. And if you have any questions, I'll be try to answer them. Commissioner's questions? Commissioner Johnson. Rick, you probably know that we, we are involved in that. Uh, Jeannie, Lee, uh, Jeannie Fisher has been uh, involved in that in the past. Uh, we just got some documentation on it. So, uh, Eric's get, got that down there. We'll do that again. The only question I have about the $800, that surely will be spent in the entire <coughs> county. You're not going to be, that's not going to be the Rocks, just in the Rocks. Just, it's not just Rocks, but it's for the entire, this, this portion will be for the, we ask for Rocks for money as well. Um, and that money will be allocated for Rock Springs, but for what the did, county, what did they say? Just what did they say? Uh, they, gave, they, oh. they, they were very generous. Green River? Uh, well, we did. Oh. We did. We did. Yes, I'm, I'm sure that they're Rock Springs. Do you want to move an equal opportunity? Of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else, Commissioner Johnson? Other commissioners' questions? Commissioner Shankville? Um, we've had some discussion um, around Six Penny um, that. Wom Sutter is one that's been undercounted. Do you have a plan um, in addressing how Wom Sutter's population will be? I, I think Keely is working on that, and, and yes, because to answer, go back to Commissioner uh, Johnson's question is, yeah, we, we, want to, we want this funding to be for the county. Um, we, we see opportunities, everything that's good for, for our chamber is good for the entire county, and so we want to make sure that that investment is for or Wom Sutter, Bear Oil, make sure every, every folks, all the folks up there are counting up, everybody throughout the county. Good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Commissioners, other questions? What's your pleasure? Does it require any action? Well, I'm, I don't know. That's my question. I, I make a motion to authorize uh, funding for Rushman Chamber in the interest of the census in the amount of $800. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Shane Field. Discussion? What would that come out of the budget line item? Would it just be our commission line item? Or? No, I wouldn't want to take that. I think the events come with Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did probably. Uh, well, and may I double that. If I may, in regard to your question, I probably refer to our, our accountants here. So. That, that was my question, actually. Oh, uh, where, we, where would we take where, it from? Where would you like to take it out of? Um, if you would like to take it out of reserves, we would need to do a budget amendment. Um, if you don't want to take it out of reserves, it could come out of the uh, I think we need to look and see if budget. it could come out of the commissioners. What I would suggest, just take it out of the commissioners. Yep. And if there needs to be a budget amendment down the road, down the road take care of the commissioners. We can yep. do it at that current time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we've got a motion. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, so we'll, we'll make sure you get your money. Thank you. No, thank you. Appreciate what you do. Appreciate it. Thank you. The commissioner's We're not we're not on board yet. Eight thousand coming out of your budget. Okay. Up next, I believe, is the uh, Castle Rock and Miss Bailey Doctor, your CEO. Hello, sir. And you'll introduce. Yes, sir. This is with you. Yes. As and regarding the ambulance subsidy, right? Very good. And thanks for coming back like we asked you to.
Hello. Good morning. Hello. Hi. Hey, how are you doing? Good seeing you. Hi. How are you? How's it going? How are you? Nice to see you. We'll see how it goes in a minute. We'll see. I'm not worried. Okay, baby, would you please introduce your... Well, I'm Bailey Doctor and the CEO for Castle Rock Hospital District here in Green River. I'm Dan Stanton, um, our board member, Kathy Sorensen is the board secretary. Reed Robbins is our treasurer. Bob Gordon is our chairman and Todd Wilson is the CFO. Well, okay, floor is yours. Thank you. So we're back requesting the remainder of the ambulance subsidy that we requested last spring. Uh, the way that we have figured our subsidy in the past is on a per call basis, so we align our per call subsidy with Sweetwater Medics. And this year that rate, because of Sweetwater Medics increase, is $232 per call. Uh, we respond to about 1,300 calls a year, so that total amount increased to $301,000. Uh, in uh, the spring you approved six months work with the caveat that we continue to explore the possibility of combining ambulance services uh, with Sweetwater Medics and as you know the hospital was able to determine that they couldn't take on ambulance at this time so we're back now requesting the remainder of the subsidy which is another $150,500 uh, which is half of what you um, half of what we asked for in the spring so That'll be from January through June for you. Questions, commissioners? Commissioner Smith. As we work through the process of, of changing the ambulance service and how things are going, um, say something happens in a month, two months, four months, um, could we recoup that money that uh, that is not spent if, if you were to do something like a mine or, or whatever the case may be? Yeah, I mean, I think depending on how we structure the the change, in my experience, these things, you know, if, if something were to change, they don't happen too quickly. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think we could certainly talk about doing, are you saying like doing a month to month? Or is that what you're doing with Spirit or Medics now? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which we do that too. We submit a voucher every month. Every month, yeah. yeah. So okay. we can just not submit a voucher. So we're approving six months and then... <coughs> You voucher for it month by month. Okay. Yeah. Okay with that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, you Lloyd? Yeah. Um, can I ask um, our Ms. Berry a question? Sure. Body, well, yeah, just from our discussions, currently we have nothing allocated for, you know, uh, in the budget actually for Sweetwater Medics or. Castle Rock for the next six months currently. That's correct. correct. From, our conversation. From, from January 1st to uh, June 30th, there there was no budget allocated um, during the um, during the budget hearing and the adoption of the budget. There was only allocated monies from July 1st of 19 to December 31st of 19. So half of the year was uh, given to each of the two entities. And if we were to pass this, this would probably have to go into a budget amendment. That's correct. And be presented at the next meeting and finalized, correct? I could present that at the next meeting if that is what the commission decides, yes. Just, okay, those are the okay. questions I have. So just so, I, just so I understand where you're coming from and help me a little bit is, one, we have, first of all, Castle Rock to deal right. with. But also what I'm hearing, and, and it's been verified, that yes. as much as we approved to continue the subsidies for Sweetwater Medics, we haven't authorized no. a Bonnie, Miss Berry to do a budget amendment so we could start paying them as invoices. So the second part of it is, is after we finish with costs, Castle Rock, then we need to probably have that conversation um, if we wish to authorize that uh, budget amendment for Sweetwater Medics. Is that correct? That would be the direction I think we have exactly. to go in. Otherwise, we don't have they don't have the ambulance service. Yeah, so that's not money. good for our citizens. No, no, I agree with you. So, okay, very. Anything else, Commissioner Lloyd? Any other questions from the commission? Um, I just kind of a follow-up question for Jeff to Bailey was, um, you know, we talked if something um, was to happen. And I know things don't happen overnight or at a quick point in, in a situation like this. Have there been any further conversations regarding? 
consolidation or anything just amongst the other entities since the hospitals moved away? We have, uh, we haven't had any other formal workshops, but I have spoken to Spirit okay. Medics about continuing to try to explore ways that we can work closely together or even combine services. We, we still stand by for medics and they do the same for us. So we really do, I mean, we operate very closely together. Um, so none of that has stopped. So we're still distant. Yeah, we're still we're still trying to figure out a way, and we would welcome your feedback if there's a way that you feel like would be appropriate for the services to combine. So that's certainly something that we're open to. So it's not something it's it's you know we don't have a crystal ball or anything, but it it'd be hard to believe it would be ready to go in six months at this point. You would probably write out this contract at this point. I would assume so. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anything more, Mr. Commissioner Lloyd? Anything more? No more questions. At the moment. You can come back. Okay. I reserve the right to marinate. Okay. <laughs> Mr. I think that's why. Mr. Johnson. I, I think we if we whatever we do, we should do it with an understanding that it's a month to month uh, agreement in the event because we got a problem. Smith County's got a problem. We don't know where we're gonna end up with this thing. So I, I think that if we should fund it, it has to be done with a budget amendment that with a clear understanding it's month to month and it could change and we would want to retain the option of uh, uh, making those changes relative to the agreement we might make relative to the next meeting with the budget amendment. And I only throw that out so that all of you can hear, at least I'm saying I know where we're going to be with our agreement with uh, when we have to vote on this thing. That's my view on it because it's, it's a fluid, fluid situation right now and we don't have the issue resolved. Any other comments from the commissioners? I'll just make this, I, I fully agree with, you know, month to month. I, I certainly support the subsidy for Castle Rock as well as when we get through water medics. And I think it needs to continue on a month to month basis to the tune of $150,500, whatever that is, month to month. Will that work for your operation, Bailey? Mm -hmm. It would work with it. So I would go <coughs> right alongside with what Commissioner Johnson saying because everything is fluid and I think this commission will keep you informed as best we can as we move forward when we know what's going on there so that would be my comment to it so uh, that's all I have to say commissioners pleasure entertain a motion I don't think we need a motion we need a budget amendment next budget. oh budget amendment we'll take care of it so go ahead and authorize Bonnie to move forward with budget amendment that's um, do you let's okay so I'll throw it in for both entities as well Sweetwater Medics as well as you want to back off one at a time I would like to I would like to speak with Sweetwater Medics um, I wasn't a part of the conversations at the beginning because I wasn't here um, and so I have some questions. Okay. Let's, so do, like let's do Castle Rock, and then we'll have to talk to Bonnie and the bus. Thank okay. you. Okay. You're welcome. All right. So with that, we'll authorize Bonnie to uh, do a uh, budget amendment for Castle Rock. And at that tune, we'll, you know, $150,500, and we'll look at it at our next meeting. Prove it. Does that work for you? Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Have a thank good day. You. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Vic. Thanks, Vic. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, while Candy's setting up, uh, what would you? What's your pleasure with Sweetwater Medics? We know that a previous meeting a while back we did. I I I prefer to discuss that in executive session. Oh, well, very good. We'll move that to executive session because it deals with contract. That's right. Okay. Very good. We'll move that. All right. Okay, with that, up now will be our events complex, a budget amendment for insurance and mill levy decrease. First, <laughs> we take a repayment for equipment. You, you want a break? I need one.
Could we take a two hour break? <laughs> Minimum one. Yeah, I need it because I can't get this computer to work. <laughs> Larry could help you, it could take longer. <laughs> <laughs> gotta love it, you gotta love it, Larry. Well, well, let's take a little break here. Okay, let's take a break. Let me set up. We'll be back here in 10 minutes, 10 to 12. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Excellent. Any other questions? Commissioner Carter. This, you know, this is extremely impressive, Larry, to, and we get to see this, but does the public get to see this type of a presentation? And if, if not, where, how can you get it in front of the public? Because well, eventually the public is going to decide what goes with this thing. Well, we're going to be taking, hit, hitting the road here pretty soon. We just want to make sure that you folks were, uh, saw the back of the building. And you, know, you all, all of the nuances about how that was going to be you know, put, put up. So before we did, before you end up in another meeting someplace to see something you haven't seen before. Okay. You definitely want to, I would presume you're thinking, airing it when you know whether or not it's going to be on the ballot. It's part of it. You wouldn't do any good if it wasn't part of it. Right. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. That was great. Thanks for sharing. I was wondering what tobacco would look like. Yeah. Okay. Next item. <laughs> As you know that we've uh, been working with the National High School Voting Oath uh, group, uh, we've been notified that they're going to be uh, selecting future uh, facilities on, on the basis of indoor uh, rodeo facilities. <coughs> And so we currently do not have that except for the building that we currently have, which is not the right size. Um, I just want to kind of remind everybody if, if, if you know, we're, the economic impact associated with the National High School Rodeo. We have 65574000 That's a lot of money. Since it started, and we've got a, uh, we'll be back in 24 and 25. Mm -hmm. But they're giving us a job <coughs> that uh, you know, future bidding, what they're going to want to do is to move in doors. And as many times as they've been rained out, I don't believe it. But, The return on investment has been exactly as we've indicated. Uh, those are large numbers. Those are the economic impact into our community. Um, the cost of that uh, new rodeo arena is 17. 16. That was on the six cent project list at first, and you all asked us to decrease that. So. That was at 16.1 million for the second indoor arena building if we were to proceed with that. Now, regardless if it goes on the six penny or if it doesn't, uh, we're going to be looking for a way to fund that. Uh, we think the return on investment supersedes um, the chances of putting it on ballot and not having it approved for whatever reason. So we're going to be looking for other funding sources that we go along. But you know, those are that's a that's a that's a large uh, ROI. Um, you know, for Sweet Park County, and I think it's great for the you know, for a lot of businesses that are going to be maybe impacted impacted by some fluctuations in uh, other uh, revenue centers in in, in Sweet Park County. So, the, uh, we have it out of prison, so. That's what we have. Um, I don't know how to proceed with this other than um, we, we, we've got to find that amount of money uh, as we go forward. And I don't believe uh, we're going to be making an effort up on, on the state level. I don't know how that's over. We're all facing the same issues. If funding is any indication from the state level, it's going to continue to be less before it's more. Right. So, but uh, when you bring that kind of people, that number of people into this community, and flush them through here, and have them spend the kind of money they spend, uh, you want to make sure that the board, the commissioners 
understand the, the importance of this particular project. I didn't want to make it just with our board, but I want to make it sure that you guys are up, up to date on how Appreciate that. Appreciate hearing that. Commissioners? Go ahead, Commissioner Johnson. First of all, Larry, I, I, I applaud you for what you're, what you're doing there, and I think you're absolutely right in not clouding the issue with what you're talking about in the future. As a matter of fact, I don't think it would be wise to say too much about it at this point in time. But at what point do you need to be able to say to the, to the rodeo people uh, that you have this? Uh, how far in the future is that uh, before you have to have that, uh, that decision made? I'm talking about the. You yeah. you got to get over. You, you got to get over the current battle with the six cent right now. And, and agree. That's that's. And that point. should be number one priority. For them. So when we talk about this stuff is we, we, we have them booked in uh, for 24, 25, but they're already taking bids for 26, okay. 27, you know, and further out. And so, uh, uh, the sooner that we can come up with a possible funding mechanism for this, whether it be borrowing the money, whether or not it be um, some other mechanism, uh, <coughs> the, the Wally Johnson Foundation, for example, I, I, I think you guys. It's a good idea. It won't fly. But it's a good idea. <laughs> His board of directors, I don't think, is a board. <laughs> <coughs> but the first step is to, to, to let you know what's going on. The second step is to tell you that we've got them booked to <coughs> twenty one twenty five. And the third item is that we are starting to uh, look at. They're already starting to look at the 26, 27, 28, 29. <laughs> So we will come back with a plan, but I think we're going to need some input from the uh, commission, and we'll come back with some other small Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, commissioners? All right. So then we get down, and now are we ready to move into the heartwarming? <laughs> this, is, this is dear to my heart. I figured it was. <laughs> uh, I had a meeting... I think right before the holidays with Commissioner Lloyd and Ms. Berry about our um, budget. So there's a couple of things that we wanted to visit with you about. I think there was a little bit of confusion when we did our budget in July, and I apologize that we were just able to get back together in December, but um, we thought it was the intent of the Commission to keep our budget funding level at the same level that it was in 2018-2019. But when we actually received our final budget, we were actually cut by $66,968. And so I went back with Commissioner Lloyd and Ms. Berry, and I think that was part of the discussion between the COLA monies and raises and those types of things. But what we're asking you is to reconsider um, putting our budget back to its seven level. So adding the 66,968 back into our budget, which would put us back at last year's funding levels. The second part of that conversation was um, Commissioner Lloyd came to us when the insurance increases came at 20%. Um, we try to be proactive on that, and so we had talked to Gary McLean several times before the budget to say, hey, what's happening? Of course, they didn't have any information at that time, so Commissioner Lloyd came to us and said, you know, once they find out what the percentage is, that we can come back to the commission and ask for that. So the 20% 20, 20 increase in health insurance is $42,300 is the, the number to our budget. So we figured if we were going to ask for one, we would ask for the other. So total amount is $109,268 for this year, which is significant for us. So um, each of those numbers is significant. When you put them together, it's very significant. So we're asking you to consider um, helping to cover those health insurance increases and then also putting our little mill levy, what it was before, which we thought was your intent. I just think there was con some confusion when we went back and forth. So. Thank you. Anything else with that, Candy? OK, commissioners, questions? I'd like to hear what Lloyd. Mr. Lloyd, just say about that. Yeah, I think um, this is something Bonnie and I talked about too. Um, um, when we and we actually had some side conversations that day um, when we approved the budget, that we realized that, that it's my understanding his, historically the commission um, has for the component agencies covered those insurance costs, and for whatever reason, with the late change, it did not roll into those component agencies, and it 
had a drastic effect on the Arts Complex, Southwest Counseling, and even the library and the museum, because at that point I was really was on for four of those agencies. And um, one of the discussions we had was if it did affect them, that they could come back and, and look for that budget amendment. Because historically, we were, from my understanding from talking to Bonnie, historically, um, the commission has funded those pieces of their budgets because that's what we've always done. And so that's what we've done historically, and it was really our oversight in, in the communication of that to the component agencies. I think on the insurance side of things, to me, I think we should really consider covering that and for the other entities that may, may approach us because that was our oversight. Thank you. And when I said they could come and request, I mean, they could come and request, whether it would be, there was no guarantee, and I did say I felt like we shouldn't live up to that if that's what we've done historically. But that was one, one of five. I make the court a lot of the, the meetings, I'm one of five. No. So. What about the other part of it? That's what, 40,000? What's the, what about um, the other 60? The other piece of that, Pete, that was um, the COLA piece is what it was, um, if I remember right. Um, Bonnie, help me correct if I'm wrong. You have the 66, right? And what happened was, when we created, um, when, if I remember, and, and Doc and Jeff and, and, and Commissioner Johnson, feel free to jump in. As we were doing the budget, um, we did say we had funded the events complex, what we um, what we had done the year previous year. But then what happened is some of the entities had um, larger amounts of raises than we were giving to our employees. So we had them go back and reduce some of that rate there. And I don't think the intention was to... Um, lower what the events complex was going, but when that formula came through, it did lower base because they did have listed five to seven percent raises for some of their employees. So, okay, Keith. other questions? Go ahead. So, the raises that you had in your budget were those that were cut back on, were those given to the employees or were, were they cut back to what was requested? No, the two percent COLA is what was approved. Okay, yes. I had mentioned to um, Ms. Barry when we met that uh, the question on the budget asks what, I can't remember what the what it is, but the percentage of raises and the percentage that we had in there included the steps and the COLA instead of just the COLA. So there was some confusion in there, so that's where that money difference came in. So um, last year the mill levy allocation was 2.853. This year we were down to 2.786. So um, again, we just thought it was the intent that we stay at the same level. And that's what all the conversation was about, so just a conversation. Other comments, commissioners? Some of you are still marinating on it, so mm -hmm. I'll make a comment. Okay. All right, so I yeah, I looked at, I pulled your budget from last year, and I saw the 5 and 6%, and, and I went, okay, I remember that piece. Uh, going back to the health insurance 20% increase, um, now, I know the county took the 20% increase uh, overall, but yet with their employees, there still was a co-pay. Employees paid 20%, you know, of that. So is that figured in, it is. in your dollars? It is. We used your exact um, prices. We don't prices, change those okay. at all. I know the hospital and the health council maybe changes some of theirs, but we use the exact same formula. Same thing. So that's... For your that's that's uh, apples to apples. Yeah, apples to okay. apples. So 42300 is the difference on the calculated rates between 2019 and 2020. All right, so the, the copay and all stuff worked out. Yes. Time. Okay, very good. Now let's go back to the budget. 2018, Sweetwater County funded you, that's the money we gave you, $1,910,076. 1976 Towards the end of that budget, I remember commissioners asking the question, well, no, I'll take back up. Towards the Sometime during that budget and that, the events complex presented a three-year plan for improvements of so starting out first year nearly 900000 and then a million and then a little more than a million third year. So for fiscal year 2019, we included that 900000 which brought you approximately $2,812,000, approximately. There's some change in there. And then we come into our budget for this year <coughs> in that we left that 900000 in there. So really, for the most part, we did fund you for the 1.9 and put the 900 k in again for this year is what we did. 
So how did we short you the six, the 66 or the 46 that we're talking about? The where, do we, where do we make that mistake? There was a couple other things in there. So um, the salaries obviously increased. You guys had, okay. a, had approved the, the full increase. The salaries increased a little bit. So that was 30, 30 some thousand dollars. Um, our operating expenses went up, and that was in that budget year. So that went up about 5%, our annual operating expenses. Um, and then the money that was left over for capital. Okay. So it just, that combination of those two things made the difference of the 66 and 68. Okay. Well, and the point I want to make is there's still $900,000 that the commission allocated over and above what your budget was in 218, left the same budget the next year. Here's another 900, left it the same year this year, and left the 900 in it. So just a point of reference is sure. when we decide what the message is for the budget this year, um, I would hope that that $900,000 you realize is negotiable. Right. In my words, I'm not speaking for the rest, but I remember when all that took place for that extra money. I mean, not that you couldn't use it or anything, right. but you know, we don't know what the revenues are going to be. So, and then, uh, what's do you know offhand? Um, your uh, cash on hand is how many days? Currently, yeah. I do not have to tell them yet. You do you know there? I think this it's going to be about the same as we were last year. I think it was. I got last year, so you think you're right in that same neighborhood, okay. And then you do get your uh, loan you take at the beginning of the year, so you pay bills and that until we start getting tax dollars in to get your right. money. So that's all, all work with that. Right. Thank you. I don't know if that made any sense to anybody. That's good. That's good. So, okay. I think it's safe to say that we run it as close to a business profile as we possibly can. And well, with, with, with that being said, tongue in cheek, <laughs> when are you going to be self sufficient? <laughs> That's well, part of a business profile, Larry. Well, uh, <laughs> as soon as we figure out a way to keep the people with the torches on their project. Okay. We just, you know, at some point in time, we got to talk about what, what, how many years out is that going to be, and then you get there. Well, I think was, I think that's exactly what we're trying to yeah, do. Yeah, we are. Continuing to make those type of improvements in, in, uh, to candies and and uh, and the rest of the, the crew who recruit a lot of things that we're recruiting. You know, we've got uh, the Motor Coach Association people coming in. Those are huge dollars uh, from an economic standpoint. Now, we can draw them in, but there is a limit to what we can charge them for being in. I know, and I get all that, you know, but at some point in time, those things got to pay for rather than you guys drawing out of your regular budget. Sure. So, I mean, I mean the whole shebang. Right. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. <clears throat> Any more questions? Okay, right. commissioners. So uh, I'd like to hear what Roy's he's their liaison. He's your liaison. What's your recommendation? My recommendation for sure is to cover the insurance difference because Bonnie, I want to clarify what the question for you is. Historically, the commission has covered that for the component agencies, correct? Historically, um, the the component units have known in advance how much that would be prior to mm -hmm. them turning in their request mm -hmm. for funding. Um, so they had you know, figured that that was just part of the expenses that they were aware of when they turned in their request. Um, I'm not sure if, generally before the requests are due, um, those, those component units would either contact HR or <laughs> HR would let them know what approximately the increase would be. Um, I know the 20% was never talked about until after those were due, so there was no way for them to anticipate a 20% increase because we've never had such a large increase. It's historically been more, more like 5%. Uh, so, so in the sense that they knew what that was before and they could include that in their request, yes, the commission has covered that. We've just never had a situation like this where it's been such a significant increase that came out after the fact. So, so it's in the budget. 
So based with that, I I think the budget would have been adjusted accordingly with the right information. So I firmly I firmly um, support making sure that's covered. As far as the other, um, I would also support that. Um, and the reason being is um, is I one of the things that came out with that, and I know this is a different entity, but at Southwest Counseling, when we made the reduction of um, theirs based on the two percent of the raises. Um, we actually are like less than like five percent, five or six percent of the total Southwest Counseling uh, budget, and when they were giving a little bit more in raises, it was actually minuscule. So I think that that number was flawed, um, or could have been flawed. I think Bonnie did the best she could in the situation, and Bonnie is we're blessed to have her. Um, but I, I I do think that would be um, I would recommend looking at both numbers at this point and supporting both numbers. So what is that? Give me that total dollars again. 109,268. And that breaks down 42,300 for insurance. 66,968 is the decrease in the county funding. And, and I, I want to restate what I just said because that I don't like the term flawed. I think the hard part is when we when we took away that COLA, it's, it's difficult because each of the component agencies are diff different. And, and I don't know if there's a solid number to make it fair across the board, except, hey, what were you going to give your employees the raises? We want you to show you what the number is at 2%. Yeah. Okay. Is what we would do. Commissioner Johnson. Well, there's a little difference when you talk about the events complex. Uh, they bring in a tremendous amount of money into the county that they, that you know, we cannot account for. When you talk about the $8 million, that's, that's benefits of that or the, the vendors uh, that exist in this water county and others that doesn't that doesn't necessarily flow to the events complex we have to take that on us uh, in, in a good thing so uh, what i what i think should be done if we're, if Roy is, is on top of that he's done the research i think what Roy needs to do is to make motion to uh, in that amount to uh, for a budget amendment in that amount for the next meeting which gives us time to gives, digest that little bit question better. That's all I have. Okay, so any other questions, comments? Um, just one more thing is, Mr. Johnson's right, the amount of money that we brought in representing the multitude of, multitude of different interests throughout this county, you guys have done a great job. And every one of them does bring in some economic impact, just some more than others. And what's key about it is what we've got to figure out is what is it that people want and what are they willing to pay for and figure out how to pay for it. And so you know, it sounds like that's the model you're working under. So with that, that's all I have to say. So I'll go back here there, Mr. Commissioner Lloyd. As liaison, would you like to make a motion to approve a budget? Well, I guess we would need to have body make a budget amendment what we would do, so that wouldn't even require a motion at this point, right? It wouldn't require a motion. Okay. If the commission would just like to direct okay. me to make so, it, it doesn't require a motion because so the motion will be the budget amendment at the next So meeting. what you would like is, commissioners, uh, should we move, move on authorizing Bonnie to make a budget amendment for the Sweetwater Events Complex to $109,268, is that correct? Thirty-five five cents. 35 cents. Okay, we got to get that in. For consideration. For consideration at the next meeting. Very good. Everybody agrees? Okay. We'll move forward. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. No. Uh, one minutes. comment, though. <laughs> As I listen, and it's just my opinion, it sounds more like it's a process of getting component units, agencies, as well as whatever proper or t in a timely manner notification. So we need to work harder to get that done through uh, all our departments, and that's on us, in my opinion, and purely my opinion, and I'll leave it right there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You have a good one. No, thank you, guys. <laughs> We're not leaving yet. Oh, that's right. We're our mugs in the audience for a few minutes. Okay, the next thing on the agenda is a six-penny allocation, and uh, I believe with that it'll be uh, a discussion led by Commissioner Shanefield. And uh, do we need anything up on the screen for anybody?
I'm going to turn it over to Commissioner Lloyd first because he's had some conversations with Rob that I was not a part of, and he's got some um, some other ideas as well. So, and then I would like to I'd like to start with us looking at the total amount that we are going to allocate in total um, or allow to be allocated in total and um, move on that and then I believe we should at that point look at what percentages and how we're going to be sending that back to um, the different entities to come back with projects. Very good and I, I would encourage commissioners of all if possible it'd be nice that before we leave this agenda topic that we have that in place because there's other timely things coming up I know we say we got time but Time flies rather quickly. So with that in mind, we'll turn it over to Commissioner Lloyd. Okay. Um, well, I know um, this has been a, a diff this, the six spending process is difficult because currently we're at $180 million of project requests. And, and honestly, you can make argument that any one of those project requests are, are really tough. And um, after our last uh, workshop with this, I went back and I've spent countless hours figuring out what projects to cut and those kind of things and and how to move forward and I, and I really became quickly um, I quickly realized that I don't know if I should be the one making the cuts so I, I am um, I have two concepts I want to throw out today one one was the base concept I came out and then I'd like to ask um, Chairman uh, Wendling to let Rob kind of present some ideas because I did call Rob last week late in the, late in the week um, and he just and, uh, he does I, I gotta be honest as much as I like we like to give him we give him some stuff he he's got so much historical knowledge of the county that it's it's a benefit and so um, I go from bashing him this morning to praising him, so it's, a, it's kind of bipolar on my part, but I apologize. But, they, uh, but um, what I came up with was um, a formula, um, a concept of how do we come up with an idea of, instead of us picking and choosing what projects that we would cut, of giving each of the entities, uh, the municipalities, a certain amount of money based upon population and um, um, there's some kicker, because I think one of the things we have to look at with uh, Superior Granger, um, Barrel oil, one of their issues is they don't have the ability to generate much sales tax. And so it's more difficult for them to create some of those projects. But I'm also going to say, I have a difficult time considering giving Ranger 11, a nine or $11 million for a couple of reasons. A, proportion of sizes, dollars per person. Also, the question, do they have the infrastructure and the ability to finish $9 million of projects has to be a question. So the first formula that I came up with was basically I took the population of the of the of the community, which was their oil was at 0.23. I moved them to one percent. I moved that. I rounded them up to the whole number, which was one, and I added two percent. So, so so for Superior Granger and Bear Oil, it worked out to be about 2.4 million dollars a community. Long Sutter ended up being 3.2 million dollars a community, leaving 87 million dollars left. 87 um, percent um, of the money left, and I broke it down um, at. Um, 25% for the county, 25% for the city of Green River, and 35% for the city of Rock Springs. And the thought was then we would give that whole number to those communities and entities and ask them to say, okay, now you have the projects you were looking at, you come tell us what projects and then we'll group them. And I think, you know, and, 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 I th and, and so no matter what number we decide to go with as a commission, I think that kind of thought process, and I don't know if those are the exact numbers we want to go with, um, is necessarily the way we want to go. But what I think it does, it gives the municipalities a better concept of where we're at. It also takes us off from having to make the decisions for the, um, the municipalities of what are their most important projects. And um, and um, and so that's kind of how I broke it down. Um, and then, you know, like for us as a county, we have multiple projects that would come to us, and within our percentage, we decide which ones we would put up on the board for vote. And then once we got those projects, we would bring them back and, and group them. And, and I think our responsibility as a commission is um, is there are some super valuable projects that will end up on the ballot. There are some super valuable projects that aren't going to end up on the ballot. Our job is to be able to package them and to put them in a way to allow the entities to go out and market it. Because I think right now we're facing a lot of negativity in the community regarding this, and no matter what projects go through, to be able to give our entities the opportunity to market it and put a positive spin on what they've done to make this happen and go through. So I believe it's our job to put it out there in the ballot the best way we can 
to consider all the different entities, their monies, their needs, in a way, in a, in a package that it will pass, or the majority would pass. And the, the greatest thing about this, this tax is we get to put it on the ballot, but the voters get to decide. And that's the greatest piece of this, of this process. But how do we put it out there to have the greatest amount of possibility for success for the voters to pass it? So that's kind of how I broke it down. Um, Rod had another great formula, um, and he walked out on me. Um, it was very similar. Um, and, uh, and his actually um, looked at it a little bit differently. And so when he comes back, if we have questions, we can ask him, and I'll do my best. It was took some of the same concept I had, but looked at the actual um, the actual request from each of the entities and gave it um, and used, used an assignment value of like 0.75 for any kind of infrastructure value or projects, 0.25% for quality of life projects, um, and then um, and then came up with an equivalent number there. Uh, the smaller communities do receive a much higher in both of our proceeds, in both of the ways we came up with a uh, per capita per person, but I think we almost are going to have to have that to give the smaller community something. And, and I do believe they, they, they're, they're a viable part of this community, and I think we need to make sure we're also supporting them. So um, that's kind of where some of the thoughts I had. So, so I, one second, I'll have you come up in just a minute. Um, I've asked Doc to put up a spreadsheet that all of the commissioners have as well. Um, but I took Roy's um, consideration and put that, that's total um, option one for 80 million because that's been um, the base discussion is, is where the cap has been kind of set. Um, and allocated that out with the 3%, 3%. Um, I actually lowered Superior to 2% because the 3% was over their requested yes, amount. Um, and then Looking at um, County, Rock Springs, and Green River, I think that that's going to be a little bit bigger discussion um, between us as well once we figure out the total amount. The total option number two, all, all of these are for $80 million, so if we did vote on something different than that, then we would re, you know, relook at the numbers. Um, but after the total option two, the allocation, um, I looked at the projects that potentially, in, in turn, with the percentages, um, and with Bear Oil, that would allow them to complete their top project. Granger, it would allow them to complete their top project. Rock Springs, it would allow them to complete all their non-sponsored requests, um, if that's what they chose to do. With Superior, it would allow them to complete their only request. Um, Green River, it would be, oh wait, Long Center, it would be their top two projects, <coughs> and Green River, it would be their top three projects. Um, we, I also wanted to keep in mind that um, Ranger and Green River potentially have some slip money coming. Um, they will have slip money coming, coming um, that would also be able to play into that. And um, Walm Sutter, we've been having some discussion around the population there in that it really isn't accounting for the actual population that is utilizing Walm Sutter because there's so many rental units that weren't um, accounted for with the census and everything else. So that is why Wom Sutter's number is at 6% um, on these, or on this spreadsheet. So the last total option, um, which is not my recommendation, but I thought it was important to look at, was solely by population um, bumping those, those lower entities up because that is the whole purpose of the sixth penny tax initiative is to give them um, a fair share due to not having as much population and still needing the infrastructure that's vital for these communities. So um, as you see, if we went solely off of percentage of population, Rock Springs and Superior would be receiving over the requested amount. Um, and that would that also leaves Sweetwater County in kind of a limbo. So are there any questions around? I have, uh, it's not a question, it's a comment. When you start looking at the percentage that they represent, and that was the request of, of Rock Springs, for example, and they, they, they're saying we should get this percentage of the total pie. The thing we have to remember is we, we represent all 44,000 of those people. So I think we have a bigger responsibility in this thing. Just uh, Rock Springs, Green River, Superior, and that. We, 
we have to be fair. I understand that, but I, th I think we have to remember that we, re we, re we represent everyone in the county. And some of these projects, in my opinion, better serve everybody in the county as opposed to those that are just in the city. The one I historically have always used is the hospital. The hosp it's so easy to see that the hospital represents and is a critical to everyone in the county as opposed to some of the things that are strictly in Rock Springs or Green River or Ranger or whatever. Absolutely. I agree 100%. Yes. Yeah. Comments? Yeah. 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 comment I'd like to make is that I was working through this and trying to wrap the head around it. Um, you know, the population, uh, I just had a hard time going with that direction, so I started looking at the tax base and, and talked with the treasurer's office about that. And, um, as I mentioned in an interview, um, you know, the eastern third of our county, the, the Wamps that are um, barrel oil area, it's 22, over 22 percent of the tax revenue. You know, so so it's hard to say. Well, thanks for paying for 22 percent. In we're going to give you eight percent of this other money back. And so, not that I had a great um, answer for that, but I've tried to work through some things and tried to make the numbers work. And it's I'm just saying that that's a, that we should consider that as well. It's it's not strictly about the population, and it's uh, it, it should be. Uh, based on other things as well, and it kind of was brought up by Mary, you know, we pay for schools, we don't only use the schools, we pay for fire, hopefully we're not using fire, and, you know, should, should Wamsutter get, uh, you know, um, a fair shake, should they have clean water or, or whatever the case is, so, food for thought. Next step. Now the Commissioner Lloyd Sorry has a question. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got hold of me a couple times too. <laughs> Well, Mr. Chairman, yeah. Commissioners, I was not really prepared to do this, so I had to grab some information. Just for, for a little background on this, the middle of the week last week, Commissioner Lloyd called me and wanted to bounce his ideas off me. You know, and his point was, you know, you worked with these in the past, you've had pretty strong feelings in the past, and you worked with them, what those are. What do you think of this idea? And so, after listening to him, you know, basically what I had said was, you know, I'd be glad to, to kind of go through what you've done. And I think I, I don't have any problems with what his concepts are. I think it's a very viable way to look at this. But I thought that there were a couple things that probably needed to be tweaked in my mind if you were going to go forward with this type of a scenario. And so what I did, and I, I didn't have an awful lot of time to put it, but I, but I have thought a lot about this, so I think there's good thought that has gone into some of this. So I, I put together, you know, basically under his proposal, I took the, the number of people in each of the communities, I took the total dollars that have been requested, things that nature, and tried to apply what he had done, and then just amend that to kind of do what my thinking was. And my thinking all along has been, I, I, I've told everyone, I think $85 million is the number, and I've been saying that for, since day one. It's very similar to what we did previously. What he had asked me to look at was $80 million. So I did that, and I also put the $85 million in that I've been thinking, and looked at the first model. And, and when I did that, what I came up with, we had talked once again, we felt like the small communities, obviously, it's much more difficult for them, as we all know, uh, in a rural population to fund their infrastructure with a small population than it is for a larger community. So I used the Elizabeth Warren plan, and I took money from the top, and I gave it to the bottom in some of the situations. <laughs> so we're going to impeach you. I just said that's what I did. <laughs> so, so basically what I did was I took five times the amount of money for the smaller populations that I did for the, the larger populations. And so rather than giving Rock Springs the, the 42 per, or excuse me, the 53% that they represented the population, they would have actually received 43% roughly. Green River, which actually represents 28.5% of the total population, would have gotten 25%, and on down the line with those modifications. In looking at the numbers that I came up with in doing that, with an $85 million uh, appropriation, um, it was obvious that most of the entities weren't going to receive anywhere near the, the number that they were looking for when doing this. So I thought, well, you know, having thought about this previously, how, what other ways could we look at this and, and potentially do it? So I put together a couple of other scenarios that I thought um, 
might make sense, and, and a lot of it will depend on how you choose to, to put these things on the ballot. And what's been done in the past is a lot of times you've, you've taken an initiative like the hospital, put it out separately, you've taken out the events complex, you put it out separately, the police station in Green Arrow was put on the ballot separately. And so I looked at that and put basically, I came up with four criteria. One would be, or, or four initiatives, one the hospital, one the events complex, one which would be the infrastructure needs that have been asked for, and the other would be quality of life issues. And in doing that, I, I basically weighted the infrastructure at three times what I did the quality of life issues that were more important, just arbitrarily in my mind, just to come up with a number to share with Roy in doing this. And so in doing that, when I look at the $80 million, um, you know, it, it's, if, if you look, if all, if, if you put four initiatives on the ballot, the hospital for $11 million, I, and realize I didn't have the numbers either, so I don't, these are probably not accurate, but they're relatively close. The hospital, let's say, was $11 million. The events complex, I had 11.2 from my recollection that they were asking for. $47.1 million in infrastructure and $15.7 million for quality of life. Um, that, that would break down, you'd have $62.8 million for your infrastructure and quality of life. You'd have $11 million for the hospital, $11.2 for the advanced complex. Um, if you look at that, it gets Rock Springs fairly close to, to the number that they were looking at. It doesn't do a lot for the others. But I think what it, what it made me look at was that I think we potentially need to look at more money rather than that. And it all comes down in my mind. I'm, I'm going back on myself here, and I hate to do that. I've always said $85 million is the number. But in, in looking at this, 85 doesn't work in this scenario. So for the scenario to work more work better for everyone, I plugged in $100 million. And, and the reason I chose $100 million was in thinking, you know, the way society has changed over the last several years. People who are buying cars nowadays, it's very common when they buy a car, they're buying it with a 72-month loan. So in looking at 72 months, it would be the same as going out and, and buying a car at this point in time. And, and financing it for 72 months. If we were to go 72 months on this project, it would raise about $100 million. And so that was the numbers that I had shared with, Lloyd, with Commissioner Lloyd this morning, was if we had raised it to that, and, and with the concept that we would have basically three different things on the ballot. And his thinking was, and, and I, I tend to agree with this, I mean, the communities know where the money needs to be spent much more so than I do. So I, I would think it would be better for them to choose their specific projects, whether they're infrastructure or whether they're quality of life, but give them the total for that and then let them make that decision within the scope of this if we were to allocate the money on these funds. But the, the basic premise that came out once again, I, I think I could be swayed, which I didn't think that I could. I, I think with communication and going out to the public, I, I think we, we could sell potentially a, a little bit higher um, issue than what, than what I had considered previously. And so that was what we had talked about this morning. And, and, and I, I still waffle on that, and I, I, don't, I hate to waffle. But, well, don't. Well, the, 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 whole, the whole reason, once again, and, and my, my belief in, in this entire process is we've been very successful with this in the past. And the last two issues that we've done have been around the $80 million mark, about $82 million on the last one that we did. Inflation, I think we could go, that's why I've always said the $85 million. But the, the more important thing is I think everyone has to realize what we're trying to do is sell this to the public. They have to buy into this, and they're the ones who have to vote in favor of it. And we've proven that they, they will do that with what we've done in the past, with, with going out with an $80 million issue, providing the information that we've done in the past and everything else. And my belief is that, you know, there's a very, very high likelihood if we were to do that, it would be successful, which is what we all want. Um, do I believe that it could be successful if we do everything right and we want a little bit more than that at this point in time? I would say I, I think yes. I don't think it's as likely, and, and it certainly has to be weighed by you to do that. 
but that was my input. And as I say, I was doing this just strictly to try and aid Commissioner Lloyd in this. I, I, not, I wasn't trying to bring you a proposal or anything of that nature. It was just some things that I had put together that I thought would try and help him. So I hope it gives you a little bit of information. And, um, that, that was basically what our Thank you very much, Rob. Hey, thank you, Rob. Questions? I just think you want to correct him. They, they all have not passed. There are no, no, things I, on a ballot, ballot that went down. No, absolutely. And, and, I, and I, I there will be lose. some, in my opinion, this year that will go down also. Oh, I agree. And, and it certainly depends on how they're packaged. That's you know, exactly and I, right. I didn't mean to allude to the fact that they don't pass, because I, I certainly know that's not the case. And the first thing I think the taxpayer is going to look at is that total amount. I, I agree wholeheartedly. But I also think that's the taxpayer's choice in that if we if we if we separate it out with it you know they can choose to vote for 80 million and then that other 20 million doesn't get funded then you know I, I think that much more and that, that was my thought. thought in doing this because if you if you put basically 80 million a little under 80 million dollars for the infrastructure out the public can choose that if that's what their desire is they don't have to choose the other so they can limit to that amount if they choose to do that at that point you know I, and I, I tend to agree totally with Commissioner Johnson. I, I, I think certainly some projects are going to are destined to fail with this if you, if you put them out in their own things of that nature. But I also believe, and I, I, heard, I heard him say at another commission meeting, if you put it all together, it's destined to fail. And I really believe that's the case all the time. I agree. We all agree. I think we all agree with that. Uh, Commissioner Smith. Uh, I think that the, it's my feeling, the dollar amount is important. I'm, I think that the time to pay it back is for me, anyway, that's that's the more important thing. You know, if 100 million meant 10 years, then I'm thinking no way. But if 100 million can be in that seven-year range, perhaps a little less, maybe a little less. 71, 71 months. 71 months. So, that, you know, that that's that's kind of where I've always felt is the five to seven-year, 90 to 100 million is really what I've what I've felt was kind of the the selling point for me. Anyway. That's where I Mr. Could go. Mr. Johnson. Yeah, I think using your uh, scenario about buying a car, I've been lobbied by some of the people that are selling those cars. And you got 1%, you got a $50,000 car. You got, I mean, you got $5,000 or whatever that number ends up being, whether it's a $75,000 car or whatever. Their opinion is it's going to hurt them in, in this project. So they're. I think there's a lot of different things we need to look at before we do this. Totally agree. And let me go back to on what did you say? How many months? Seventy-one. Yeah, the, the on approximate for a hundred million for at least seventy-one months. So it's six years in a month, not quite seven. Years. That was Rob's approximate yeah. number. So okay. Yeah, I, I misspoke about the amount. So, okay, that's okay. I just wanted to make sure I heard that. Go ahead, Mr. Singh. Well, is that based off of what we're currently bringing in now? Well, we're, it's not what we're bringing in now because we don't have it on now. It's based on the best information we have, what we're collecting now in our regular sales right. tax and converting that to what we would be if we had the specific purpose tax on. Okay. So, so once again, we're, we're still estimating that it would be about $1.4 million a month. Um, and, and nothing has changed to, in the last month or so to change that. So I, I, I think that's a good number right now. Do you want to bring up the point that we had discussed using now's numbers too, that it potentially could get me yeah. yeah. My first question would be is, is I sense in your figures you there's no consideration for those major um, construction projects that are going to go on to the county that would impact the sales tax. ExxonMobil, um, Jenner, Genesis, and that yeah. type you of know, thing. I, I, you know, my, my personal belief Commissioner, Chair, Mr. Chairman, is I don't think we're going to see a significant bump in sales tax from those. It's going to be a significant time period before those happen, and I don't think we can factor those in at this point. Okay. So, so I don't Thank you. I have a question for Lauren. What is the objective today? Just to, to come up with the, the number, the number, the top number that we are going to, and then look at how we're going to allocate that out to each entity. Today? Be here for a while. <laughs> I say 100 million. That was my thought. Okay, so we have it out there. Let's just, okay, Mr. Smith said 100. We'll just go over. Mr. Johnson? 80. 80. Mr. Shanefield? I will go with 100, depending on packaging. Certainly not all. I'll just say 100. Mr. Lloyd? I'll go 85. 
it's where I'm at is just depending on packaging because one thing I want to as long as we have some things over here set separately but we have the big package um, I've always said 90 to 100 so I'll, I'll hang right around and I'll go 90 to 100 I mean I'm flexible in there but what makes it flexible over 90 to 100 is what are those that are going to be in there because we may have to bump it to make it work but I, I yeah, I, I, there's a time I, over 100, you know, I was easy thinking 100, maybe just a little bit more, but I think with what's happening out there as far as Slumberjay and Halliburton and them, we're losing some working in that. we got to be careful because, you know, I think it's important to take those things into consideration. So I'm going to say right at 90 million, depending on package, I'm going to a little more if we need to. Um, so I plan on asking to have um, the bonds folks come um, potentially or at least call in for our next meeting to give us some some of the options that they have um, around marketing around helping us package those once they do come back from the um, you know the municipalities on what you know what they want to put forward for you know our consideration of the ballot after we give them their, their numbers so. all right so between 80. 85 and 100 is around here, so is there any ground to give? Anybody? No, I'm, I won't give. Uh, I mean, uh, as the packaging comes forward, if, they are packaged, if it's packaged in such, such a way that uh, doesn't take into consideration uh, the benefit to the entire county, uh, I think we're making big mistakes. I, I, I don't think we can just uh, put the money in Long Sutter and, and Barrel Ale and Granger. Uh, it, we still have to have major consideration for those that support the entire population. And then you look at those within the, the cities uh, where the population is, major population is, and uh, it's still look at those, how we're going to, which, which ones of those we need to put in. I don't think we should leave that entirely up the city or the counties. We've got a priority listing of them. I think we should use that priority listing that was given to us. Yeah. I don't necessarily agree with that 100%. I, I agree that we do, we obviously will have the final say on how they're packaged, but I do think that we should give the cities um, and the entities the opportunity after we make the decision to come pick back. Their own. Yeah, to pick, pick their own. Yeah. yeah, and that can be, I mean, if the city of Rock Springs chooses to put one of the say the airport on their um, ballot initiative and cut one of their infrastructure projects um, you know I think that that we should as Rob said the, the cities know um, and the different entities know what their needs are and I think we do need to give that power back to them um, to let them Thank come back to us and let us know what they need what are your thoughts Jim? Well, everybody, not any thinking that isn't wrong. I know, so that's the hard part that's of That's the hard part about it. It's just not it. wrong and yeah. that type of thing. And, and I think there has to be consideration in the uh, what each community's projects are and then give a percentage. And uh, when I looked at it, I, I liked the percentage idea, but then I wasn't quite sure how it was falling out for the county and maybe a couple of cities and that type of thing. And, and uh, I'm still, you know, as long as I know, we, you know, there's those entities, I think what would be easier for me is, as I look up there, is I look at, okay, where do we want the county requested projects, first of all? Do we want them part of the total package? Which projects? You know, dollar amounts for total projects? You know, because we've got dollar amounts for the county. We've got dollar amounts for the cities, but again, too, just what are those percentages of that total amount? Well, you know, that's my thinking. And they all go hand in hand, Mr. Johnson. Well, from a county standpoint, I think hospitals, number one, the best complex, number two, and the, the amounts of money that they put forward, and we look at the balance as to how we're going to yeah. distribute that. You know, that's our prerogative. It's, uh, yeah. it's, we drive this bus whether they like it or not. We drive it. And if the people don't like it, um, yeah. they can pull us out of office. 
there you go. <laughs> well, there's a big difference though between your 80 million and your 100 million. Exactly. And I mean, if we're reaching superior at 100 percent at two percent, then superior is taken care of. You know, and looking at top priorities all the way down, the additional 20 million would well, potentially benefit the whole county. Then, yeah. While taking care of the municipalities as well, at least their top priorities. And then, are you, where, where are you fitting in? Go ahead. Mr. Chair, I just, the, the main focus, I think, on this, and this is what it all comes back to, and I know you all know this, but I, I just I have to say this. The most important thing here is to try and come up with a way for this to be successful. Yeah. And, and that's that's the thing that we have to look at in perspective. It's much more important than the number of months or, or the or it is. It's, it's such an important asset that we have. We, we have to do the best we can. Certainly, you have to do the best you can to make it successful. And, and that's that's where I think your your decision comes in. Is you make the decision. How can we package this so it's going to be the most successful? And, and that's where I that's why I come down as, as yeah. the specific specific purpose tax is just so important that we all want it to be successful. And and I think there are some delusions of grandeur out there with some people that it would not be successful. And it's very <coughs> So what are we gonna do with the projects? Are we gonna sponsor Jamestown? Well, I think those are conversations that we need to have after we decide how much we're willing to allocate. So that's what we okay. need to discuss next meeting, or even the meeting after that, and look at their their projects. Because really, I think that the breakdown, and after talking to a, a couple of county and a couple of different counties who have just recently done these initiatives, they were they came up with their top number. They broke down what entity was going to get what. They pushed it back out to the entities. The entities came back with what their priorities were, which we kind of did that a little bit already. But then they moved forward with what their county was going to sponsor um, and, you know, package the deal with the assistance of the bonding company and everything. Mr. Chairman, one of the things that the Ross Green said, and I think they have a point, even though I think we address that, is they need to know what that top number is. And I think we should make that decision today and then and we can argue about the rest of how it's packaged at, yep. at a later date. All right. Okay. I don't think we can argue about how it's packaged for it. I agree with you, Chairman, uh, Commissioner Johnson, because until we know what their projects are, and then we package it based upon projects. But what, what they said, and I agree with them, what they need to know what the number is. Sure. Sure. I'll start it off. I'll make a motion that we sp uh, special purpose be limited to no more than fifty, ever, no more than eighty million dollars. Okay, we got a motion that be limited to eighty million dollars. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, we got a motion and a second. Uh, discussion. Can I ask why? Why is eighty? Because I really believe the feedback I'm getting is this thing has stands as. Uh, so there are some people out there that have told me they're going to vote against this no matter what happens. They think it's a, it's going to tax them. It's almost that. But I do care. No, I really care. care. I think they do care because they're paying the bill. But if they say they're going to vote against it no matter what, what is 80 or Well, I, I'm just, that's a sentiment. I, I really don't believe that. I think some of it will pass, but I think at 80 million, some of it's not going to pass, it, depending on how it's packaged. But I, I, if you vote us down, we'll move on. on. We'll move on to the next one. Okay. Any discussion? Yeah, can I ask Commissioner Ward the same thing? Why, why 80 million? Why, why? For the same talking to constituents, I, 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 I think the greatest opportunity for it to pass. I like Rob's 85 number, but I, at this point, I have to choose really between 80 and 100. I believe 80 has a greater chance of passing as a whole than 100 does. And of the two selections, I would go with the one I think has the greater choice. Um, the hardest part in this is, even at $100 million, we're cutting $80 million of requests. Mm -hmm. There are good projects that are going to be left on the table. And one of the things that I, I like with a less than number of years, too, is a greater amount of flexibility to come back in three or four years, look at it again when it's done, and say, what else can we look at? If you look at some of the proposals that would take like 10, 11 years to pay off, how can you forecast what the most important things are going to be in five years when you're tied into 10? And so I kind of like the flexibility that 80 does. Um, I prefer 80, 85. Um, it just, but it's, not, it's apples at this point. But if I had to go between the two to put the initiative on that I think would have the greatest chance to pass, 
I believe will be 80. Go ahead. The 80 is without the bonding. That's so correct. that would be an additional. That's my thought. Okay. That, yeah, that, that, and that's what we talked about earlier. So I. What is the additional bonding? Well, I think we have no control over that. Oh, okay. I think I'm willing to live with that. Okay, it's a percentage. And then the fee mm -hmm. that they charge to, okay. to help so us we carry don't know it out, market it, no. and everything. Okay. No. Okay. So, any other comments? Question. Question. I agree. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, oh, same sign. Nay. Nay. I want to see a little more, but we got three at 80, so it passes. 80 million is a cap. And then if I could make a suggestion, I, I think I, I really rely on Lauren. She's been very good at handling this, and I think Lauren should look at that now and get back to us with what her thoughts are as, a, as to how it should be packaged and when we can discuss that with her. Sounds good. Would you be willing to assist us in getting Steeple to um, <coughs> either call in? I don't know if they can be here. They're in Colorado. I'm trying to do it for this, the meeting on the second. That's I, I'm sure they'll be here. Okay. Steeple, Steeple's actually in Cheyenne. And I would like to set up a time to talk with you and them and potentially uh, Mr. De Leon before I just to review some of the, the options. Okay, so I'll call on the second. I'm sure they will be here. The rite of passage into seniority in term time has some privileges. So we'll, we'll let that slide. Okay. So with that in mind, I think we've accomplished step one. Now this next step is, uh, what's your feelings about uh, notifying those entities of their amount of dollars? I will notify them that we have voted um, on $80 million, um, outside of bonding. I will let them know what the next steps for the next meeting are going to be and how we will work in the meeting. Okay, and then... Uh, i got a question about that now. One minute. You disagree with me, and I, I really appreciate that. But what is going to be different from the way they've presented their part, their priorities to us? What you know, is different? I think we just need to look at. So, if, if we're going to do it by population percentage and look at projects and all of that, um, if we end up settling on something that's over and above. You know, they have three projects and three and a half projects maybe could be completed to give them the opportunity if they want to move things around or if they want to um, sponsor a nonprofit. Or, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I think that the, the and I'm basing part of these percentages based on you know priority um, and what their their needs are. So we so the percentages that we see up here in the first option is that what we're going to tell them? towns and cities what they have no. they each have no we right. have to vote on that at our next meeting i i leave again what i said i mean we don't even want to go into that arena yet no i i let i would let Lauren do that okay yeah. I, I mean i don't have any issue i'm just yeah. for process wise thinking so really not helping anybody out they no, they're not helping anybody out because what they want to say is they're how much good. do we have exactly so that was a group again yeah and i was hoping i think i can go back to the entities as well and say you know, if there's anything outside of percentage population in your priorities um, that you want me to share and take into consideration to bring forward to the commission, please, you know, please let me know so that we can I can look at that in terms of numbers. Um, Steeple also has, and they do this consistently, so they had a couple of different op options that they were looking at in packaging, and I think that makes a difference too when we're looking at priorities and how we're going to package things and the amounts. So. So, okay, anything else with that particular, that we need to cover on the agenda item? I change my mind every time I look at the numbers and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like you know, keep going back Hard. and forth. And, um, yeah, it's tough. But you know, the, you know, the, what is, what is the thing that you will vote for? What's going to pass? And, and, and I think the biggest community needs. Well, and, and I think, it's just my personal opinion, but what we do now is going to set the stage for the next time. Yeah. And I would, and I said it earlier, even though I supported 100 million, I said a while back, I also am supportive of what we're doing being successful so that we can begin working if it's 
feasible, and we've talked about this on the next one. So that one's successful. So, you know, I know nobody wants to hear tax is forever. But the way things are set up coming out of the state and the money that towns and cities and counties are getting, I don't anticipate it to be more. I anticipate it to be less. And so what it comes down to is what we want for our county, for our cities, we're going to have to decide not only what the what is, but we've got to decide who's going to pay for it or how are we going to pay for it, even more so. It's all going to be on us, more so than the state. So I'd rather take small chunks of wins than a big chunk and a huge loss. So yeah, good work, commissioners. Good job. With that in mind, it's gone. I think, uh, does that take care of the six penny? Commissioners, so. okay. All right, then we'll go on with the next uh, into other. The other thing under other I brought in was the workman's comp. Um, <coughs> Gary, can you call Gary up? Can you go to the yeah, I'm really bad at more information because I need to look at contacts and look at that. Good job, Rod. Thank you. Thank you. Rob, truly thank you. Oh, you bet. You're going to invite uh, with, with respect to this, have, have you got any concept? I know some of the entities are talking. You know what, there's still a few out there. Um, with that in mind, we uh, put down the, um, joining the WCC Workman's Comp, and I know last week you got a call, I got a call, and I, I think got a call. Uh, most of the commission should call. have. <laughs> I got a call. Yeah, and, uh, you know, and I, that's, they, they called me first, and visited a little bit, and asked permission to call each of you, as well as Gary. Also, the option is out there if we need to because there's still time, but the window's closing, but uh, there's still time to have uh, Jeremiah said he's willing to come and talk to us next, our next Tuesday meeting, in the first meeting in February, if we want him. 
and have more questions. But with that in mind, let me do share, though, that back on December 12th, like I told you, we did have the conversation about whether to uh, join the workman's comp through the WCCA or not. Uh, we didn't do any formal, but we had the conversation. And for the most, and I'll just say all the way through, it was pretty well not doing it. I think there was some information that was shared with me on Friday that I didn't have at that point in time. And rather than make the decision for each of you, your, your own vote, you talk, speak for yourselves, I thought it was best they contact you, contact Gary, and then we come together and just see if our thoughts are the same after hearing that other information. Some of that information, Gary, I'll let you share, and then I might have some things to fill in as well. Okay? So, Gary? Um, the last time we discussed this issue, and uh, there was a copy of an MOU uh, that was provided. Um, since that time, one of the questions was about the composition of the WCCA board to govern uh, this workers' comp program, and I think the main issue was whether or not um, originally Pete and now uh, uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah is going to be part of that board. That since been resolved, he will not be part of that board. Um, I don't think that was really a decision here, but it was a legal decision that was kind of hanging up moving forward with the process. Um, this process has been at least two years maybe more in, in discussing and I think everybody's kind of the point that we either need to be in or we need to be out um, so they can move ahead. In the beginning the there were six counties that had the larger six counties that had to be in in order to make this go. Uh, Jeremiah's now sitting seven but we're one of those seven counties. So in other words if the if the one or, or several of the larger seven counties don't participate then obviously there's no program and you probably know why because there's no financials to make it work for those other things. So um, I think the issue is really this that the workers comp, state worker, division workers comp will give WCCA a discount if they do the program. They're going to keep all of the discount. They're going to turn around and hire staff to administrate the program. Um, it's anybody's guess um, when or if the program would ever yield benefits back to the entity. Um, it did in the case of the North Dakota example um, after some period of time and they have full-time staff there uh, now, new number of full-time staff administering the program. Um, so essentially where they're at today is to say, hey, do you want to do this? As I told the board last time, from our standpoint, internal strictly staff said, we don't care. It does not one thing changes for us at all in the process. So uh, it doesn't matter if you want to do it, fine. If you don't want to do it, all of our claims are still going to go to uh, workers' comp. They're still going to process them all. Our rates are going to continue to be the same, at least in the foreseeable future. And by that, I mean next three, four years. At some point, there may be some benefits uh, in terms of getting the industry, which is county government, uh, to be safer than the overall base rate may drop. Um, as I told you and I told uh, Mr. Ryman, in the North Dakota case, they had 56, twice the number plus of small counties. Um, and so they saw a little bit. Um, we don't have that many. So I'm not, I don't know if we're going to see. I mean, I'm skeptical at least about seeing uh, in the, anywhere in the media future uh, those benefits but it's not going to hurt either and so um, the decision from the very beginning uh, Mr. Ryman has not pushed this issue as much as uh, Pete had pushed this but Pete was really trying to get workers comp off of uh, the counties paying premiums for workers I'm mean, sorry premiums to WCCA so part of the point is if there were savings and benefit then they could waive or get rid of the WCCA dues. As some of you that have been around for a while remember, there was a time when Sweetwater County pulled out of WCCA for a year to almost collapse the WCCA. <coughs> so um, that was Pete's real issue. Um, this was sort of a secondary to that. I think the entity is now really more focused on the on the workers' comp benefits. Administratively, I just don't care. I don't. It won't make any difference to us. So it's really a political decision to me of one, um, whether we want to participate in this to allow it to go ahead and, and yield some potential results down the or 
is there some concern about the growing, you know, bureaucracy of WCCA? I mean, I, and that's, that's more for you guys. It's more for us, yes. But operationally, we'll, we're, it looks like I have to really Go ahead. So it potentially could save us money in the future, but it's not going to cost us more than what we would originally be paying. Well, that, that's not entirely true. I mean, I guess, as you well know, that's why I ask yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's unlikely, I think, by everybody's thing, but as you know, just like health insurance and everything else, if some entities were to have bad years, rates are rates, they got to have enough money to cover it. You could have uh, enough bad claims out of that group that the base rate would, in fact, go up. The presumption is, is that you have a bunch of small counties that are doing nothing or very little to either manage their claims or to engage in programs that would reduce their rates and that by creating this, you would get some of that and lower the overall base rate for the industry, which is county government. That's the concept. Okay. Uh, Think about it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I had one, but I don't remember. Mr. That. Johnson? Well, my opinion hasn't changed on this. We have problems with WCCA uh, the benefits that we've stayed in it, we fund them. Uh, my big concern with this is that it's not, there's no benefit to us. We're going to continue to do it. Uh, what we're going to help help occur is a bureaucracy that's in Cheyenne again. Uh, Cheyenne sometimes doesn't even remember where Sweetwater County is. Uh, I, I, I still am against it. I, I don't think that we should facilitate uh, building a new bureaucracy. Today it's one person, next day, well, I can, and uh, tomorrow it's another person. I, I just think bureaucracies tend to grow. We have complete, complete control over what's happening in Sweetwater County. I think we need to retain that. So. Thank you. I, it's one of those things. I mean, if I were having to do this, if I were deciding this for, for my business, um, I wouldn't really care. <laughs> and I, I kind of. Kind of, I, I don't really have an opinion. I guess I don't. <coughs> like I say, it's hard because there's could be possibly, maybe, perhaps some benefit down the road, and that's hard to bet on. So really, I guess WCCA is asking us as counties to help them you know, grow. Yeah, <laughs> and eventually maybe reduce our what is our what is our premium each year. Well, it's a, what you'd be reducing is just WCC. I mean, of, oh, what, do you know what you know what we pay the dues? Yeah, how do we place it? Forty-five, was it? WCCA. They lowered it a little bit for us. County Commissioner Association. I don't know. <coughs> haven't looked at it. So, I mean, I, mean, I guess it's, 40, it's forty-five thousand. At one time, I think it was sixty-five thousand, and they lowered it because they sensed that we were somewhat unhappy with it. And then, what if we want to leave? Are we? You know, for if we don't want to participate in with WCCA. We want you to join and then you yeah, want or if we don't want to participate as as a not not in the workers comp section, but as, you know, we don't want to participate as a county with them because perhaps we have disagreements then so are we able to pull out of the workers <coughs> comp or is it separate? Or and I discussed this with Doc a little bit also. The the um, the um, intent of this is to be relative long relatively long term, long term meaning we'd say more than four or five years, not to be in and out, in and out. Um, but there certainly are provisions if you want to leave um, to get out of that. <clears throat> Again, I think the issue that's bringing this up and why they keep coming back to this is that <clears throat> the larger entities are doing those things, the smaller entities are not. And so they're looking for an entity to do it for them. You know what I mean? To manage that sure. for them. But if the large entities don't participate, the six or seven now large entities, there's no program um, to have because the amount of savings wouldn't be enough to do this. What's driving the time frame since we last talked was they won't have to hire a director to direct this program. And so um, they would do that with the savings that would come from workers' comp if everybody pitches in. If not, if these six or seven entities are not in there, um, then the money's not there to, to make that point. Just to wrap up my comments, I'm, I'm not sold yet. Jeremiah can come yeah. visit next next meeting. If we, can invite, we can invite him down yeah. if you'd like. Right now, it doesn't. It seems like a lot more work for a lot of nothing. I, I'm open to listening to Jeremiah and just maybe getting some more information. But it, I kind of like Jeff from the perspective he took. You know, when I do this and partner with a bunch of other businesses for my personal business, and I. It's hard for me to see the benefit. I, I see more risk. You know, if someone isn't doing the training programs the right way and those things, there could be risk in that. And 
I just, I think I have questions. I'm open enough to listen to be amicable to the idea. Information presented now does leave me questionable. Cool. Right, just follow up on that. In my other life, uh, for example, take Bridger Cole, where I, I ran half of that project, that, uh, that, that uh, business for them. There is no way I would have given away the control of workers' comp to somebody else. Mm -hmm. I would want to retain that ability to manage our accident programs, etc., and not just give that to somebody else. I, 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 I just don't trust other people to do my business. They're not going to care as much. Absolutely. And they we don't even concerned. know who this person is. No. There's not even anyone hired yet. So. <laughs> Or no, that somebody, somebody's got somebody oh, yeah, in mind. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> so, one of, one of the things historically, I think, was that um, we're, we have a bunch of elect, sovereign elected officials kind of have operational autonomy within the departments. And it's been difficult at times to get everybody on the same sheet of music with respect to things like safety and some of those issues. Today, we don't really have that. I think we have a much uh, more unified group in that regard, and it's easier to move ahead with those types of things. And so um, yeah, I think that we're going to do what we're going to do regardless of that, that and, and, and maybe there will be some sort of training or something that's available we could use. I don't know. But in the short term, all claims, whether we participate or don't, is, are going to work for scoff the same way they are now. No difference, um, and we're still going to do the same things we need to do to try to keep people safe, to do training, to uh, do that. We're going to try to, you know, just continue to do that. But as you guys know, at the end of the day, it's like health insurance. You don't know when people get sick or stuff happens, and and and, and that's that's the way that that is. So you try to manage that. You can't say that because you do training, there will never be any accident. It doesn't work that way. You might lower your long term. Possibility, but you're not guaranteeing it. No guarantee. Mr. Okay, yes, I, I think if the if the majority wants to bring, there was a time I would have voted to get out of WCC. I know when we had a, the head of WCCA was not, but that's another no, story. No, I support Jeremiah. I think he's good. If the majority wants to hear what he has to well, say, I'll go along with that. Not, and, I, and, with I'm here, and I'm here, and I'm hearing that, and I'd like to have Jeremiah come down. And the one thing I'm going back to. Just a couple of things. Just the risk granted with a group, you can't control what's handled. There's nothing to say that our movement's comp claims won't spike shortly. Yeah. And then we're alone rather than average amount is what would happen there. Going back to, I, I think there was a legit reason. I will never question the thinking of the commissions back then of getting out of the WCCA. I uh, will never question that feeling about, hey, we're not because I've sensed it's recognized very well from the east side of the state. I agree with all that. But I asked this question of this commission, at what point in time do we keep that close but start on our own making efforts to rebuild those bridges and working in that direction? And granted, you have to take some punches to the chin as you go that direction, but begin to start taking the high roads and doing things that you know, we do it with our fire departments and stuff through MOUs to help communities fight fires because they can't have the equipment, you know, nobody can. So we all share, we all work together to spread it out and help each other. And if, like Gary, Mr. McLean says, no risk, would this not be an opportunity, in my thinking only, of, hey, testing the waters of building better relations and getting, you know, some of those people in the East because not only do we see them as not recognizing us, but maybe they see us as not recognizing them. And being, you know, and I hate to use it, but the old school adage, maybe we're not playing in the sandbox very nice as well. So just food for thought, I think I agree with you, we'll bring Jeremiah down, but I just want to throw that out there. I think it's time, if we want to, of starting to, working to improve relations Across the state with everybody. Go ahead. Please. I've seen that go up and down. I know you have. And the, and the thing that I saw that helped us is when we had people from this commission, the, and and Sublet County, Lincoln County, that were very very active in the key that that's there that 
has slipped away from us. The board of directors at WCCA is made up of you and the others. The 23 people, that's the board. And that executive committee has taken over that. So the, the time that we did well is when we had people on that executive committee. So what I said to you, yeah, by the time, you, we need to get involved. I'm not going to, but I think some of you that want to get involved with WCCA should. And we had that, and I'll go back to conversation we had three years, two, three years ago, is, you know what, we need to, st if we want change, we've got to be part of it, stay with it, and get involved. I'm trying right. to do that, but we all need to be doing that if we can make it fit within what we're doing in the rest of our lives. That's correct. And, you know, and that's where it's at. But I'm, I'm trying to be somewhat global and visionary over the whole picture, so please excuse that as a commission, but that's how I am. Go ahead, Gary. I just wanted to make one point of clarification. Whether we're in or out, um, we're still in the same yep. uh, class code. So if we were to be out and ours go up or go down, it affects the base rate the same way, in or out. So we're not, we're not in like a group that's in or a group that's out with respect to the base rate. Yeah. It's still counting up our base rate. And that's one point. We, we partial list to where all the counties are with this issue. Some are deciding today. Some have just decided this morning. Sublet voted to go in this morning. Sheridan last week. But all 23 counties are right here on this memo of what their status is as of Friday, January 17th. I did get Texas. How many were in and how many were out? Um, right now, okay, the following counties have approved, and that's Lincoln, Fremont Park, Washington, Converse, Albany, Laramie, and Sheridan County and sublet now as of this morning following counties have indicated support with final action scheduled for today campbell niobrara the following counties have scheduled final action for today without providing indication that's teton carbon and natrona and the following counties are considering action but he's unaware of the scheduled action um uena bighorn crook weston platte goshen Johnson and Sheridan. So we have, you know, two weeks we'll have a better idea where all the other counties are. Okay. All right. So with that, uh, Sally will notify Jeremiah, put him on our agenda next meeting and, and a time that. Let me ask you, as Commissioner, what's the best time you'd like Jeremiah on the agenda? It doesn't matter. He's doesn't matter. Okay. Is, well, him him. is Troy coming with him then? Um, he may. So I, I make the invitation somebody, to Troy as well. And I think Troy should be there yeah. if he can. If he can. Well, that's going to be difficult for him. Yeah, commission. Yeah, it's tough for him. He's at a commission meeting, but if it can work out. Well, Jeremiah's good enough. Yeah, Jeremiah's great. I agree with you. Okay, with that, thank you, Gary. Appreciate it. Uh, any other comments regarding that issue? I believe the next thing on our agenda, if it's okay with the commissioners, is executive session to address real estate, personnel, and contracts. Um, and. Uh, I don't know if there will be any action coming out of executive session, but people are willing to hang around and see till when it's over. Um, with that, uh, I'll call for a motion to go into executive session. We'll take a five-minute break and then come back. Or ten minutes. Okay, got a motion by Mr. Lloyd. Second. Second by Commissioner Shanefield. All in favor? Aye. Passion. Motion carries. We'll go into executive session after the break.
executive session um, with no action needed to be taken at this time. I'll entertain a motion for the commissioner's meeting to adjourn. So moved. And moved. Doesn't need to be seconded. We're adjourned. Thank you. Good job.